If Ferrucia wins this game, he secures himself and, I mean, he, wait, he's struggling. He's, oh. he's not doing this quickly enough. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's only got seven more moves. Can he do it? Oh, oh, it's, it's oh, he did, he did it. He did it. He did it. No, he missed it. He missed it. Night he of missed three. three. He got it. He, he, did it. he did it. Oh my God. What a legend. Oh my God. How did he pull that off? He missed mate in one, but he found the mate anyway. How did he do that? Ferruja, oh. you're a hero. And you're the hero not that we deserve. You're the hero we need. Oh, oh. my God. Ferruja. Welcome back, everybody, to uh, day two of the Bullet Chess Championship Qualifier. Uh, if you missed yesterday's show, this is the, uh, the second opportunity for a whole host of a lot of strong players to make it into the final bracket, which will take place this weekend. But today, we don't have, uh, we don't have Danny with us. We have Robert Hess. Robert, are you excited? Levy, I'm way more excited to be commentating on the action than playing because yesterday I struggled. I mightily, I might, I might add, through the field. 25 rounds of bullet chess? I mean, come on, man. It's too much. Too much for a player like me. That's what I said to Danny. He, uh, he said, you know, do you want to take a chance at the tournament? How many points do you think you'd score? I, I, I told him I probably would not even make it into the double digits, if I was being honest. Maybe 10 or 11. But this is a ridiculous field. Uh, we just had the bracket up there. Why don't we remind everybody of the format and the rules of the event? Uh, we know it's a 25-round uh, uh, bullet Swiss. And the winners of these uh, Swiss events, the one held yesterday and today, make it into the, uh, the final events. Uh, of course, we know that the tournament is uh, limited to titled players. Uh, but interesting, for anybody that doesn't know, the second through fourth place finishers qualify for a round robin qualifier to also make it uh, to the final day. And we saw the bracket earlier. We've got amazing players in there like Hikaru Nakamura, uh, Sergey Karyakin, Lamar and and and, uh, and so on and so forth. So, Chad, I hope you're excited. If you have any questions about the event, 
I believe we had just under 300 players yesterday. It's definitely over 200. Um, right now, already at 200. And an interesting point to make is that Ferruja won it yesterday. If he wins it again today, he actually gets to choose uh, where he will be competing uh, in the final spot. And everybody there, you also have the prizes uh, up as well. Nice, nice payday, as Danny said yesterday, for two hours of bullet. Yeah, uh, especially for something that these players do for free all the time, right? I mean, you could see many of these players, including Ferruja, just beating up on incredibly strong GMs in one-minute chess on the regular. There's a couple players in today. For anyone that doesn't see it, you can go take a look in, uh, in live chess. But there's some players here today that weren't there yesterday. And I would say that they're very, very, I don't want to say favorites, because obviously our top two are still our top two uh, from yesterday, but there are potential spoilers. That's wonderful time. Tuan Min Lei. Have you ever played Tuan Min Lei in Bullet Blitz? I have. Uh, I don't really remember how I've done, but I mean, he is just an amazing, amazing speed chess player. I don't remember how I did against him because I, I think my score against him is so bad. I think I have two <laughs> wins, like 15 losses. It's, it's actually really terrible. Yeah. Uh, we have Arabic Falcon. Uh, we have Polish fighter Alexander Bortnik. I mean, if we set the cutoff for 50 points within 3,000, then about, what is this, 12, 13 players. We see Hammer here. I think Hammer is at like a bullet peak that he hasn't seen in a very long time. By the way, we have brothers, if anyone doesn't know. You know the Bortnik brothers, Robert? Uh, yeah, I saw them playing yesterday. Alexander and um, what's the other one's name? Uh, you tell Mikola, me. Yeah, Mikola, Mikola. Mikola, right. Yeah, I think, I think Naroditsky is going to play today as well. Yesterday, he said that he had class. And well, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I might have considered skipping class or playing from class, but that's why I did not get a cum laude in, in undergrad because uh, probably I spent too much time on, on shells.com. <laughs> so, but another thing to point out, Chad, and we probably have a graphic for this, but we, uh, we had a bullet record yesterday. Ali Reza Farouja started with. I believe 18 out of 19 and went 33 and 13, if I'm not mistaken. Was that his bullet peak? He's entering today at 3246. Those are video game numbers. <laughs> I mean, like, have yeah. you ever have you ever played I mean, like have you ever played a video game where you have some broken stats? I mean, these are kind of stats that I don't know. I don't know what I would give to be a 3200 bullet player. I know it's ridiculous, right? He actually probably was on pace to be even higher than that. And then he got disconnected and then went on a full tilt, right? He just started losing game yeah. after game, surprisingly, I might add, because he was running away with the competition. And I actually have these um, hyper bullet chess games going up right now between Penguin GM1, that's Andrew Tang. And mm -hmm. I don't know who Elm 2007 is, but clearly a very good, this is candidate master, but 2785 rated in the bullet. So Tang warming up his mouse skills right now and it's just amazing how quickly players like this play. I think that Levy, I mean, you could talk about this at length, but we don't really fully recognize just how fast these players think, right? It's not just about the mouse speed. It's also coming up with concrete ideas in the blink of an eye. So, you know, what can you tell everybody about just how difficult it is to play this 30 seconds time control where people say it's not really chess, you're just making moves. But if you look at the game that's on the board right now, they're actually playing a very normal opening. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, first things first, uh, Elm 2007 is part of this uh, school of, of hyper bullet freaks where basically, uh, you know, you're, you're a young, talented player. Your international ELO is about 21, 2200. You're a decent player, you know, in yep. classical chess, but your bullet rating and bullet skills are unmatched, 2800, 2900. And as we see Chesley writing in the chat, it's about anticipation and attempted swindles, particularly in 30 second chess, because it, it, it's a sprint as opposed to what can be considered, you know, a marathon where double the time in a 60 second game, uh, a lot of tactical patterns are involved. We just saw, if you actually scroll that game, I mean, you don't need to scroll that game back. It's going to be gone in about 10 seconds, but <laughs> um, we saw 95 right in the opening rather yeah. than guarding his queen and you know, Andrew Tang threatened Bishop takes up seven checkmate. Uh, there's also certain players on chess.com that, uh, that feature scholars make positions in hyperbullet on their wall. I've seen that before. I mean, it's a joke, right? You know, a lot of people say that this is killing chess, but uh, it's fun. It's reaction time. And uh, I will indicate just one thing. Ali Reza popped out to 3,200, not by beating up on, you know, some of the top GMs and IMs on, on chess.com and bullet chess, 
but he had a really successful run against Grandmaster Eric Hansen of the Chess Broad Channel, where he beat him. Robert, do you know about this? He beat him 40 to 3 in a hyper bullet match. Ferruja did? Yeah, he beat him 18 games three. in a row. Now, wow. Now, I did not know about that at all. That's great on the one hand, but on the other hand, that just clearly shows kind of a mismatch in speed, internet connection, right? Pro uh, prowess for the hyper bullet. But I think Hikaru is salivating at the opportunity to play Ferruja in a true, pure 60 second match. So. We'll see well, what happens today. <laughs> Levy, quick question for you, though, about that. Because as we know, as we can pull up the bracket thus far, Hikaru is the one seed, deservedly so. And mm -hmm. Ferruja, because he won the first qualifier, and he may win the second as well, but he's the eight seed right now. So you said Nakamura wants to play Ali Reza. He wants to beat him head-to-head. -head, but don't you think he wanted to wait until the finals for that matchup? Well, I mean, I think if, if you... If you give a player like Hikaru an option, yeah, I mean, I suppose you, you want to build the hype. You want to see Hikaru go through his bracket. You want to see Ali Reza go through his bracket. I mean, but I also think he could want to make a statement. I, I think with Hikaru, I, you know, Danny and I were talking about this on the show yesterday. From Ali Reza's perspective, you probably want to sidestep Hikaru if you have an opportunity. Right. Uh, so if you're Hikaru, you, you don't care. Listen, you'll, you, you'll, fight, you'll fight Ali Reza in the octagon. You'll fight Ali Reza on the street just to make a point that, you know, bullet, bullet chess, of course, uh, just to make a point that, that you are superior. I, that, that is one thing I have to give Hikaru a lot of respect for, uh, being obviously an incredibly talented player in Blitz and Bullet. He'll, he'll happily take that on at any moment. Uh, but there is this element of it doesn't matter when and where, right? It's, it can happen right now. So, yep. And I mean, you know, Ferruja, if he does win today as well, he can choose to be the seventh seed, which I think he will do. I think and, so too. <laughs> yeah, and, and what that means is the person who gets second place today will then get the eighth seed. So essentially the second, if Ferruja wins again, that's a big F because there's yeah. so many good players in the field. We know Duda's playing, you know, Arabic Falcon, who's a popular streamer on Twitch as well. Penguin, you know, Andrew Tang, of course. We have many popular streamers, but a lot of amazing bullet players. But if Ferruja is to win today, the second place finisher today will go through to the quarterfinal matchup and then play Hikaru. So, you know, it's funny. On one hand, you want to directly qualify, and I just see Naroditsky enter the field. But on the other, maybe you want to win the round robin instead so you get the sixth seed. Right? There's a little bit of gamesmanship involved here. There definitely is. I think getting a, an advantageous seeding, I think for anyone, you want to avoid Hikaru. You'd rather yeah. not play Hikaru because the probability of defeating him is is lower than against any of the other players uh, in the final bracket. Yep. Uh, but having said that, you still got to make a top four spot. And today is the final day to do that. And well, I mean, 25 rounds of Swiss bullet 1-0 as opposed to 1-1. I'm curious what your thoughts are on kind of the approach to this to this sort of field. I know you played yesterday. How did you feel in terms of kind of one game at a time against an individual style opponent? Danny and I talked about flow. We talked about getting into rhythm. You can lose three games, bounce back, and then boom, you know, you hit the ground running in a 10 game match against somebody. But what's yeah. it like to play one game, one off games against players? Yeah, it's a great question. It's a lot different because in a match format, you get used to certain stylistic tendencies, right? Maybe one person doesn't care about the amount of pawns they have. They sacrifice some pawns for an attack because right. they think that's going to make you calculate and you don't have time to calculate when you're playing bullet chess. But mm -hmm. if you're just playing one opponent and you might not even know who that opponent is, you have no idea like what you're what you're getting yourself into. So you might play the same opening you would against someone else, but that could be a bad choice stylistically. So I, I definitely prefer playing a match format in Bullet because mm -hmm. you know, I just feel like I get more insight along the way. But here you don't have that option. You play 25 games. Yeah. And you know if you're someone like Naroditsky or Tang or Faruja or all these guys towards the top, they pl played against each other enough to remember the styles, right? So you're you played against Arabic Falcon a million times on chess.com. You sort of pick things up along the way, but yeah, I, I think it's very difficult to get your mind set when you have no time in between games and you're just, well, you're just playing bullet chess round after round. Yeah, I agree. I've definitely uh, in, in the top, in, if you look at the top 10, I probably haven't had a lot of matches. I once played Duda in a 20 game hyper bullet match, but again, hyper bullet is very different from bullet. It, it, it might sound crazy, 
But when you compare the two, in a bullet game, you can actually play a totally reasonable game. You can get an advantage in the opening, you can push a middle game, and convert an end game all in the span of one minute. This sounds crazy uh, from the perspective of a club level player. You go, how you know how's that possible? I'm still making, I'm still making blunders. You know, in a classical time format, I think for 30 minutes, and I, and I have an oversight. Yeah, but again, it kind of shows the skill disparity and tactical vision, pattern recognition is super important. Uh, but I've not played any of these guys again only in, in in terms of bullet probably we have to go down to like hammer like i've played hammer 10 15 times in bullet chest and even though every single time you you somehow know what's coming yeah because hammer has this style you know that he plays g3 bishop g2 etc e3 92 uh sometimes it causes you to tilt and when you have one game it's very different than playing him 10 in a row and trying to pick holes in his repertoire <laughs> So you're, you're absolutely right. And, you know, on top of that, I just want to give a quick shout out to Alexander Grishuk because not only has he already <laughs> qualified for the final bracket, the set, you know, the quarterfinals, the eight players for the bullet chess championship, he was given a direct invite, but he won his game against Veslin Tapalov that I have up here in the Shemkir super grandmaster Gashima uh-huh. Memorial tournament. He won a really nice game over um, Tapalov and He's, what time is it there? Like, it's nighttime. He's got an important game tomorrow, unless it's a rest day. I don't even know. I'm losing track of the schedule. Mm-hmm. But the guy beats a super GM in a long, grueling battle. Nice finish, by the way, with his 96 just being toast. And then he's just like, hey, I want to play more chess. Let's play some bullet on chess.com. 25 rounds. It, you know, it, it's a lot of nerves. That's really what happens when you play bullet chess. It's like, you're sweating. You're like, yeah. it's all just pure speed. And, well, this guy is a legend. So props to Alexander Grishuk. Yeah, he was there yesterday, and I, I made a crazy suggestion uh, later in the show to Danny. I said maybe he's just playing for fun. <laughs> maybe yeah. it's just fun for him. He doesn't care, right? He's playing. He's playing with house money, so to speak. He's already going to be in the final bracket, and he just wants to crack at all these players. It's very rare you can log into Chess.com and get nonstop action against twenty eight hundreds, twenty twenty nine hundreds, and. Well, he can tilt and leave at any time, and he still gets to gets to come back. So we're off, by the way. All right. So I, I, I mean, whose game? I have Farouja's game up here right now because yeah. I just don't know who to follow. He feels like a safe bet, and he hit the white pieces. He's already playing an offbeat opening. So what do you think of his style so far in this one? I mean, pretty solid center. He's just pushing forward, and he's playing a strong international master. So how would you take this if you were playing as the international master with the black pieces? This is this is pretty pretty crazy to you know to fathom like it's round one you got 25 rounds to go your, your first opponent's at 2500 and if you win and keep winning this is this is as as low as it's gonna get it's gonna be 26 27 28 that blows my mind i don't know how he keeps up his level of play one thing to note about Ferugia, um i can actually give a, a bit of a status report of, about maybe the top 10 15 in the tournament in terms of their bullet style ali reza solidifies and then he pounces he's very good tactically look at this queen g4 he's already just winning right it's a fork yep two queen knights are under attack queen mm-hmm. eight queen eight protects both because you have rook takes f2 check so oh that's queen, it, there it is he protects with rook f2 check but You're bishop a beast. h6 oh he missed bishop uh, h6 but okay he'll do it next move yeah he's going for the same idea with bishop h6 i mean ali reza has this style where he pushes the pace he's relentless and uh, another thing to mention about him is that he is always up on time. You look at your clock against Eli Reza and you go, oh, I've been playing quick moves. Look at this. You're down 14, 13 seconds. That's yeah. huge in bullet. Oh, look at this. Same trick, though. Same exact trick. In fact, Black is playing pretty well here. You got to give credit to Hunnan. I don't know who that is, but he's playing really, really well. If mm-hmm. I had, you know, had this in a classical game, I'd say Black has done well to start with the worst position and make his minimize the damage. Minimize, I should not minimize yeah. Here, I, this is an end game where Black should be holding, but look at the clock situation. 11 right. extra seconds for Ferruja. He's going to win this game easily at this point. Yep, that's, and that's what he does. Uh, he makes you think in the middle game, and then once you've got 15 seconds with a bunch of pieces on the board, that's going to be it. If we go through his games yesterday, I would say that that's exactly how he beat basically everyone, everyone 2,800 and below. And look at, I mean, he's, he's getting close to a 20-second time advantage. That's a third of the time that you have allotted. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It, just, it is so crazy. And as Chess Bear was saying earlier, it's about anticipation. Hikaru Nakamura admits as much. And here, I mean, he's down, what, a pawn here? But mm-hmm. he's going to win because he's, time is more important than position most of the time in bullet. Like, you know, a balance of the two. But if you're able to play moves instantly and just your opponent spends seven-tenths of a second, 
you're obviously getting a big advantage. The king's just going to e6. He's going to win on the board. Yes. Yeah, it's just game over. Penguin has three seconds. Two. Okay, Penguin's up a bunch of queens, and he's going to win this one because he's just moving his king around instantly. And well, that's what happens in bullet chess. So Penguin wins. Any other games still going here? I see TJK Tiger in a end game down a pawn for Tiger. Tiger had a great tournament yesterday. And now he's up a couple seconds, but he is down. Oh, he blundered his rook, and both sides missed uh -oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those moments where you're just you're pre-moving, right? So you're not thinking about taking piece. Knight of seven check. There yes. he got it. King f three, g four. Oh, that's a very nice move. Get some get some pawns off. Oh, yep. take that one too. Yeah, this is yep. easy. Right. Yeah. Now just put your rook into the light square. Oh, oh I would not have done that. Wait, that king e four was just the draw. <laughs> yep. But it was a bad decision because he's pre-moving and he just decided. to... Oh my gosh, he didn't. That was win. not. Yeah, that was not it's a clutch. on time as well. Wow. Oh, wow. By the way, Daniel Naroditsky, I mean, there's 25 rounds, but he didn't win the first one. He drew he the first game. Wow. Yeah, he drew. Did Grishuk draw? Oh, yeah, Grishuk drew. And where do we go here? I see Max Delugi is playing Polish fighter. That's Duda versus Delugi. Yes. Let's look at that game. Let's hop onto this one over here real quick. And all right. This is typical Delugi. I mean, I'm sure you've played him in Bliss yeah, before. He I plays have. this London setup all the time. And Duda quickly developing his nice an E7 and D7. Not the most aggressive squares, but it fends White's plans off. And, well, Knight D5, nice. You have to go G5. Knight takes G5. Ooh. Okay, I was Knight thinking of Knight G5 as well. Yeah, that looked really that looked really good. But I guess he's playing low risk. You play, you play a guy like Duda, you don't want to take that much risk. But uh, Black's just getting everything he wants here. Exactly. Take You can take and go e4 next and open up this bishop to the b2 pawn. But when you say not taking risk, I often find it's more risky to play overly solid because sometimes you just have to play your normal moves. You, you, know, you have to respect your opponent. He's amazing, but play the board. And when you start playing too solidly, that's how it backfires. And your opponent gets everything that he wants. Like you said, uh, Duda has everything he wants on the black side. It's besides this bishop on g7 being a little bit stuck. But actually, Luis held this very well. Unfortunately, he's down five seconds on the clock. That's not going to do him any favors. And right. look at look at Duda there. Bishop H4, though. No, Bishop F6. No, Bishop F6, yeah. But the thing is that, you know, the more FG and G3, well, G3 net H3 is possible. Wow, that's yeah. cold-blooded. Yep. Greedy guy. And, and Black trade off his worst piece for a good, better white dark sword bishop. Now, you don't move I liked instead of King G7. I like Rook D2. What about, yeah. What about Rook H8? There he's sacking the piece, going for the mate on the H file. So Queen H6. Already yeah. a mating attack. This looks... Oh, he hung his queen. <laughs> it's like, wow. oh, I'm getting mated, so let me not get mated and just lose. Hey, what about Ferruja? Ferruja's not in a better position, and he's down on the t on, on time. Ferruja playing champ. Is that Raunik Sedwani? It might be. Ooh, ooh back around checkmate ideas. If he took the queen on e7, there was rook b1 mate. That's but, savage. Well, look at Ferruja go. Queen b1. Okay, def take on... D Take on D1, you want to... That's brilliant. And now Queen G3, Rook B1. Uh, oh. Queen G1, Rook B1. Yeah, that was really nice. He wins the piece there. And I think we're on the front page, by the way, Levy. So shout out to everybody tuning in right now, all 3,000 plus of you. This is the Bullet Chess Championships. I'm Grandmaster he Robert Hess here with International Master Levy Rosman. Levy, I can't even say your name quickly enough. I'm just so used to it. I know. <laughs> if anyone's curious, uh, Bullet Chess is a time format basically characterized by one minute per player with no bonus time. Of course, there are variations as in one second bonus time, sometimes two minutes to start, 30 seconds to start. Uh, well, we're watching some of the best players in the world compete for what will culminate in the Bullet Chess Championship this weekend, right back here on the Chess.com Twitch channel. And uh, we're happy, happy you could join us. I can't even catch my breath. <laughs> Me neither. And I just saw that Hans Niemann defeated Sugar Zhigalko. And we talked about Hans Niemann. I know you talked to him a bunch yesterday, but we were talking about him before the show. Strong international master. He's just playing lights out in the bullet. And, you know, he's very good, but he's definitely punching above his weight yesterday and, and today as well. Yeah, yesterday he was on a bit of a winning streak. I saw he beat Boris Grachev. That's Gwenplen. That's, I don't know if you remember him from the uh, Internet Chess Club days, but he was Vidoc. Yep. And he was this anonymous killer, basically, uh, chess-wise, everybody. Uh, that was not <laughs> me admitting to to open you know to crimes there, but uh, yeah, very very good player. And uh, yesterday Hans Niemann made quick work of him. I think he also made. I mean, ma making quick work of Sergei Zhigalko, he's a top seed, is is really impressive. So yeah, I'm gonna sit on Hammer's game for now because he's playing Grandmaster Santo Blue. 
That is a mm-hmm. Turkish grandmaster. And Hammer did really well yesterday. He was very close to qualifying for the round robin. Reminder to everybody, second through fourth place qualifies for the round robin event that is tomorrow. And the winner of that round robin gets to play in the bullet chest championship. And here, Hammer with the white pieces, he's saying, I don't care about having opposite colored bishops. You may think it's going to be close to a draw. People have this assumption that opposite colored bishops means equal. No. Pawn on f7, this bishop can come to d5 at the right moment to pile up pressure on f7. And bishop e7 is a very defensive move that hangs a5, which hangs a7, which puts more pressure on f7. So just don't get mated on f2. Hammer protects it. And Hammer is doing much better than I expected, honestly, in these bullet chest championship qualifiers. Yeah, and that's not, you know, that's that's no disrespect to Hammer whatsoever. I, I actually completely agree with you. Yesterday I, I I mentioned to Danny, I almost feel like we're, you know, we're sleeping on his on his ability to to have a big splash in this tournament. Um, because again, he has a lot of experience in these match formats. And you know, who who knows? That could serve to his benefit. Uh, but he's he's done great. And I'm I'm gonna be really honest, anytime I play these big bullet tournaments where I'm getting 29s and 28s and 3k like yep. i'm pretty jittery at times like i i don't i don't play as well as i do unless it's in unless it's a match format so kudos to him yeah no he's been playing very very well and you know, like you said kudos to him it's not disrespect towards him it's just how amazing everybody else look at this rook h1 he's mating him on the h file look at hammer did he gave up his h3 pawn so he could mate the black king here and just Okay, well, that's a good move, okay, one, to stop the immediate mate, but after king to g3 and the queen h1 renews a mating threat. So yep. I would play like that. Or he's going to push his pawn and play queen e check, queen g eight's mate. Okay, missed the mate, but he'll find it this way. <laughs> pawn just walked on through. And, yep. and remember, this is two GMs that in a classical time control could have a very equal game, but 300-point rating disparity, 250 in bullet. Shows yeah. this. How's Ferugia? Wow, yeah. is Ferugia going to get mated, Robert? Oh, I pulled up Bortnik's game, but Ferugia, okay. whoa, Ferugia is, King is on G5. It looks like he's not getting mated. Fortune favors the bold, I guess. And here he's actually just up a lot of material, but it, it was a time scramble, 3.6, 3.5. He just moves so quickly. How does he do it? Yeah, I have no idea. Ways. Ooh, knight H5 check, one of those moves that you know you're just giving up material. It's an objectively terrible move, but you do it to gain time on the clock. And here, oh, it's, oh, oh, it's forced mate. Yep, he, he found the mate. He found queen e2, queen c2 mate, and his opponent had no moves to the king. 0.7 seconds left there. Ferugia is a bullet god. And we just have one game left. Nope, we don't have that game. A draw between Nikolai Shuk and, and uh, Senior Miguel because no pieces left and time ran out. Nikolai Shuk. Whew. Okay. So who, where do we go? Oleksandr Bortnik versus Parhamov. That is Parham Maksudlu, the world junior chess champion, year 2018. And he is one of Ir- Iran's best players. Along, Well, I guess he is number one in Iran and followed closely by Ferruja right now. But Bortnik, with the white pieces, he was a force yesterday. He almost won the event. He gave Ferruja a run for his money. And here, with the white pieces, he's playing a very solid game where he's trading off pieces. He can go after the pawn e5, which is a central target, right? Levy, the pawn e3, well defended. The pawn mm-hmm. e5, more advanced, easier to attack. Yeah, absolutely agree. And Mortnik really, really loves these kind of offbeat uh, queen spawn positions with d4, knight, c3, bishop, f4. Danny and I spoke about this yesterday. Do you kind of play the exact same thing, 13, 14 of these of these 25 games when you have the white pieces? Why not? If you get good positions and it's working out well, uh, there's no reason to kind of play crazy theory. You can play d4, knight, c3, bishop, f4, just like Hammer. He has the systems, and, and that's what he does. But... Ali Reza plays theory. Ali Reza plays theory. Yeah, no, Ali Reza plays theory. Bortnik plays like the style I try to play myself. Rook takes d4 or knight f6, trying to get there at some point. But he plays very solidly and very quickly. And he plays without really risking much in his position. And now knight f6 check, the fork doesn't yeah. happen. Your knight on d4 is under attack. So you either move your knight or protect it, but the knight f6 check wins some material. But yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Bortnik has a really, really nice style for bullet chess because he's very confident in it. And sort of what we're talking with Delugi playing the London system, things like that. You just play something that's very solid that you know well, and that allows you to make the moves very, very quickly, and your opponent has to think a little more. Yeah. Uh, there's a... Uh, Ooh, Hammer versus Leon Beast. We should go there because that this game was pretty much over, the Bortnik game. But let's go to Hammer trying to fend off Leon Beast. That's Maxime vachet le the world number, I don't know, seven player, but also an invitee to the bullet chess championship. Yeah, another person who's got a spot in the final but wanted to get in some games. And the bullet rating here does not speak to the uh, 
to the abilities of this individual. Rook c7 methodically pushing hammer back. Rook c6 here winning just on the spot. You take, take the, the bishop. bishop. You get a queen. Bishop d2 now. Bishop d2 was better probably. But you're right. Okay. You're absolutely right. But oh, rook a7 check. Pick up that rook. Okay. Nice. Also, you're totally right, Levy, that I didn't even look at Maxime's rating. Leon beats at 28, 21. Can you uh, say underrated? Yeah, that's uh, how do you say underrated in French chat? That's that's I, oh, is he gonna stalemate? All right, no stalemate though. There's yeah. ladder mate, he's practiced this a few times probably in his life. And, so, and I have Vova Chess versus Grishuk. Grishuk down a piece and losing on the clock to Vova Chess, a popular streamer on Twitch, streams in Russian. And well, Grishuk's losing, he's on the board, it should be a draw with best play. But when you have one second left, your opponent's rook. Oh, no, no, you take the rook on g3. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, if you take the rook, it's immediately a draw because black would not have mating material left. So rook g3, whatever that was played here, was a really bad move, but he was kind of tricking Grishuk, limiting the space from the rook coming all the way. It's anticipatory. Oh my gosh. Robert, by the way, uh, Daniel Naraditsky lost to Sanan Shugirov. And, you know, if I said that result at a tournament, perhaps in Europe or Asia or somewhere over there, you would say, okay, well, that makes sense. But yeah. in bullets, Sanan Shugirov is a 400-point underdog very good player, but it, it just goes to show you that either Daniel Naraditsky, he didn't have his morning coffee or Red Bull kick in, uh, or it's just show, it's just showing you the difficulty of playing in these kind of, you know, in these kind of formats. By it's, the way, Lawrence Trent has four out of four. What? Well, I just pulled up the Arabic Falcon game against Leon Beast, but I can also pull up that Lawrence Trent game because we probably will not see that much more of Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> Got to give Lawrence some flack. No, he's playing very well right now. But I pulled up Lawrence's game here real quick. And, well, Lawrence is the black pieces. He's moving fast. His position, though, from the black side, okay, he's getting very aggressive. And white might have overextended with his pawn in h6. Uh, yeah, white's position is looking down a pawn and your opponent's two bishops. So is Lawrence about to go to 5-0? and oh? oh, he hung d5. That's not okay. a well, go. you know, you know, it actually helps, uh, Robert, to be uh, 2450, you know, 2480. He was 2450 when the event started. Uh, it, it actually does benefit you to have kind of a lower starting rating because you, you get kind of not easier necessarily, but lower rated opponents potentially because of the Swiss pairings as opposed to right. the arena. You look at his past four games, I'm taking a look at them now. Uh, he has played three people rated 2200, 2300, and 2400. Lawrence is fully capable by some miracle of defeating all of those players in a row. Just kidding. We love Lawrence. <laughs> but uh, in the first game, uh, he offered uh, Vladimir Fedosev a queen trade, and Vladimir Fedosev pre-moved the move and lost the queen. So, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. So, you know, lightning strikes twice maybe, but let's see if, uh, if, if Lawrence is able to win this one, although he's struggling here against the Russian. No. Yeah, he's in, he's in trouble. He is up a little bit on the clock, which could help him, but he's... On the board, he was well, losing his bishop. Not nice. Totally lost. The bishop's trapped on b6. Can't go anywhere. The knight covers the remaining squares. So he took the bishop. He'll go rush the a pawn down the board, easily winning for Evgeny Ermolaev. I don't know who that is. So Ermolaev you know, going to beat Trent in this one. I, I feel like I have a lot of these moments where yeah. I, I don't know who I'm playing. Like, I, it's a 2,500 rated player from some part of the world and i end up looking them up on fide because i just go who, you know, who is this <laughs> i have never yep. heard of them in my life yep and it's over trent loses so his perfect streak comes to an end i pulled up arabic falcon versus leon beast arabic falcon trying to win this end game he should be winning with these separated pass pawns g6 g7 mm -hmm. uh, bishop f3 bishop f3 would have won on the spot he played a move too late now he might not actually win this game because what he needed to do was play bishop f3 when the pawn was on a7 which would have thrown promotion and forced the bishops off all right he's he's still winning He's objectively winning here. And in fact, played g4, g5, g6. That was the easier way to do this, but he's going to move his bishop back. But now he's got to mate him. Will he mate him? I think he can. Yeah, he will. Especially now the king's cut off here. Don't stalemate him. He almost, if he went bishop to uh, d5, it would have been stalemate. So he, he, just show that really quickly. If he had gone bishop d5 here, that's how you stalemate someone. The king has no more squares. So you have to make sure that bishop d5 or on that dial comes with the check. Woo! Who else do we uh, have going on right now? Robert, uh, yeah. Shant Sargisyan escaped with a win because of one pawn. I know the game is over, so you might not even be able to pull it up. Uh, but he escaped with a victory over Hans Niemann, who, who was completely winning. Hans Niemann was simply up a queen. He had to take one more pawn, and then he would have had the draw rule. So, Man, that's brutal. I hate when that happens. That's amazing. 
whose game should we focus on this round? Because we have Arabic Falcon at 5-0 and after beating MVL. We have, I guess, Arabic Falcon versus Ana Well. Makes sense. Uh, we can that look at something sense. else. W wonderful Time versus Parhamov. We haven't looked at Wonderful Ooh. Time. He's, uh... Let's check that game out because I want to see Wonderful Time because it's always a Wonderful Time commentating on Wonderful Time's games, right? And this is yeah. a big this is a big game, right? We're in the sixth round right now, and I'm losing track already. This is mm -hmm. sixth round, and both players have four out of five, which means you drop one more game, you're like two points behind some of the leaders. You're not out of the running, obviously, in a 25-round event, but it's going to be difficult to catch up. And look at Wonderful Time closing the position down here with the white pieces and he plays e4 at the right moment f6 can become a huge weakness and is a huge weakness which is why i went king g7 but now i take on f5 and i ruin your pawn structure some more yep Ooh. yep 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 and the queen has to stay on c8 protecting b7 this is looking really not nice for parma but he's doing well on the clock i have a rookie four here i think about playing rookie four sacrificing exchange to get my pawn more advanced king to g7 96 check oh I would have thrown my nine to e6 right away there. Oh, b7 hangs. Is but queen very, e4. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. No, he take on f4 and then play queen e1 check, take on c3. Like you have to start taking some pawns, and you really have to get fortunate to survive this position if you are Parma. But knight takes g6, runs into queen b1 check, queen f1, bishop h2 check. So he didn't take on g6 just for that reason. And now yeah. if I'm Parma, okay, where's bishop e4? Threat made on h1. H5, H4. Oh, this is getting dangerous for for white here. Um, how to actually do more than just threaten things? I'm not sure, but C3 is under attack. Oh, knight C3, knight E5. Okay, knight F4 also makes sense. But now all of white's pawns are falling. B4 falls, D4 falls, A5 falls. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't like taking that knight. That bishop looked useful there. That's but okay. Crazy. I'm going to take A6, and then basically it's like a draw offer, unless you can run your king somehow. Well, white is up four seconds here. So if you're wonderful time, you're just moving that these pieces. Around. King of four. Just do something. I don't care what you do. Just do it. Oh, no more checks, Robert. Queen e a6. Very Queen nice. E5, yeah, just if you're part of he's going to move. He's spending way too much time. He's going to lose on time. Absolutely losing on time here. And wonderful time with this a7. Pre-move queening would have been good. But wonderful time upsets Paramov. I see TJK Tiger versus Penguin GM. And Penguin is up a queen. And he's going to checkmate him. And in fact, TJK resigns on the spot. Very nice. Whew. Chopper is still going. There's a battle of fives out of five out of five. Oh, no. And he lost on time up two queens. And he had a uh, black loss on time up two queens with mate yes. one. Oh, my God. Wow. So white stays on six out of six. That is so painful. Oh, my God. They just checkmated one move. And shout out to Absolute Fury, by the way, and to um nade nov n for the subs there just give him a shout out eo eo Gule also subbed tier one there so shout out to everybody in the chat sorry you know all 4300 of you about it's yeah. hard to focus on the bullet here and on the chat but we're, we're doing our best and levy which game should we go to in this round I currently have Anna well versus Bortnik up, but I'm going wherever you want to take us. No, that's that's great. We can, I mean, we could switch over to Chopper and Khalil because that's a matchup of two people who have perfect scores. Yesterday, right. we had an absolutely ridiculous stat line. I think we had like maybe five players who after seven or eight rounds were still perfect. Uh, and Keith Patrick, five, thank you as well for the tier one sub uh, for the five months in a row. Going to get that, that new sub badge soon. Uh, yep. <laughs> forgot i was subbed here that's funny we were <laughs> so we had i think an eight out of eight playing an eight out of eight okay and um you know that's right right now we've only got three people with perfect scores but that's that's obviously going to get chubbed down even more after this round so today is a bit more of a bloodbath everyone's kind of climbing over each other to get to the top yep and khalil musabi 77 another iranian player is looking to go to seven. No, he's beating Chopper. And look at this Queen H2 check. So next to Queen H2, King F1, Knight G3 check. Uh, he, he stopped it with Knight F3. But that was the big threat there. Stopped by Chopper. Oh. Ooh. Knight wins the Rook because the Queen is hanging there. Oh, he hung a Queen. Oh, he didn't take the Queen. He took the Rook. What? <laughs> he could have just taken a Queen. Well, what was that? Just take <laughs> that Queen. Oh, man. So he had an option to take a Queen. He said he took the rook. He's still winning, so we can forgive him for the moment. Take on e3 now with the bishop. Oh, rookie three also was oh, good. It was better. 
You're right, Levy. There's no back rank mates there, so rookie three was better indeed. Queen G6 is probably just checkmate. Right, uh, okay. Or okay, that's yeah. Now methodically, you know, take it down. All right. Yeah, your Anuel well. is gonna stay perfect. Anuel is at six out of six at the moment. Uh, and no, gonna lose on time in an yep. equal or now a worse end game, but should be a draw. But on the clock, oh, rook b3 check ideas. <laughs> nice one. When you're down on the clock list, you have to do things like what Anuel just did, trying to trick your opponent to win their mm -hmm. win -tail. And that's a good tactic to keep in mind. That's it. I think we, no, oh, no, no. Uh, sorry, I thought that game already concluded, but Chopper and Khalil are uh, finishing finishing it up. And we're going to have, well, yesterday we had uh, one Iranian with a, with an absolute uh, absolute decimation of this tournament. And now Khalil Musavi on seven out of seven. But, you know, it's only a third of the way. Right, they still got 18 more rounds or so. So, who did uh, Faruja lose to, by the way? Because he so only has actually, six or seven. Yeah, he. I'm not sure. <laughs> I could look it up. Yeah, no, and just so many games going on so quickly here. Jeffrey Jong gets Arabic Falcon. That's a game that we should definitely keep our our yeah. eyes on yeah, because we haven't see seen any from Jeffrey so far. And I'm actually not sure how great he is at Bullet. I mean, clearly his rating is very high, but can he keep up with the likes of Arabic Falcon? Uh, Penguin GM, Ali Reza, he chose a very solid line with white, sort of what, like we said, what Portnick did before. He's trying to go B5 to kick this knight. That's why A6 is played. White goes mm -hmm. A4 and go, tries to go bishop A3 to B5. Expansion on the que uh, queen side, but now knight F4 is a threat, so you need to keep your bishop at home on C1, so you can take it here. And E5, a standard move to put your bishop on E4, threaten the pawn on B7. Take that pawn on B7 now. Ooh. Tactics that is everywhere. Yeah, Arabic Falcon takes flight in any game. He and Ali Reza, I would say, are the two uh, the two tactical machines when it comes to when it comes to bullet chess and blitz chess. And I I, I see Chad going crazy because I think we've been squatted up with uh, with Danny Wrench. <laughs> <laughs> Danny in the chat. Oh, yeah. eight to eighty five. Things are hanging here. Yeah, Danny. Ooh, I was just going to say, Danny is streaming his uh, bullet games as well. Oh, Danny's playing? Yeah. How many points does he have? I, we, I mean, so, Chad, nice weather today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> How many points does Danny have? I actually don't know. We could scroll. He has two and a half out of uh, seven. So that's... Okay, so, so we're going to look at precisely zero of his game is what you're saying. Yeah. If he gets over chat, let us know when Danny makes it over 50%. We'll, take, we'll, put, it, we'll put one of his games up on the big screen. When you, when you say when, you mean if? <laughs> to get a forfeit here and there you know robert don't 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 discredit him i mean he controls the server he could you know he could kick someone out by accident that's true that's true by accident in quotes okay <laughs> and jeffrey here is down on the clock and down a pawn on the queen side but if this were to be a classical chess game he should be able to hold this because these pawns are in the light squares which means if the king runs away the bishop will come to f7 to win the pawn so that's why yeah. Arabic Falcon breaks at the right time on the king side, but look at this bishop on d3. You sit it there. I would put my king on b3. He just did that. If the king ever mm -hmm. takes an f3, you take on f5. So the king is kind of stuck to this pawn on f5. That would be an easy draw. And actually, Jeffrey's caught up on the clock. Take on f5. Now let's go bishop c8, bishop g4. Whoa, whoa. Don't ever put your bishop on h5. No, stop doing that. <laughs> because you can lose your pawn, right? Like, by putting your bishop on h5, this pawn yeah. is under attack. No, stop. Just stop it. Stop, yeah, stop moving it. your bishop. Move your king. Yeah, move. Put your bishop on c8. Go to c8. Stop going to h5. What just happened? Somebody they repeated help moves. I, I, by the way, that was awful technique from Arabic Falcon. I mean, if he wanted to flag him, he should have moved the bishop. Yeah, and he's also playing using his phone, I've been told. And uh, our shout out to our producer, Aaron, in Studio C there. He says that he is a photo of Arabic Falcon playing from his phone. That's not Arabic Falcon. That's, uh, that's not Arabic Falcon. That's somebody else. Who is that? <laughs> is that, that, um, what's his name? Um, oh, what's that guy's name? Oh, man, I hung out with him in the Isle of Man. I'm drawing Mordazavi. That, that's Ali Mordazavi, exactly. That is not Eric <laughs> Falcon. <laughs> Levy, I'm not sure what, what, to, what to say here. Uh, uh, so that's there's an so 8 out of 8 in this tournament. Robert, you're an 8 out of 8. If, if, oh, if oh that i, I just I, I just don't know what to say about that that that's ali mortazavi that's not salem saleh so uh 
Uh, yeah, so round nine, guys. Everybody excited? <laughs> we just hit 300 players. And what, oh, wonderful time versus Penguin GM. We got it. We got to stay. Oh, we got to get this game. And we're looking at it from Pe- Penguin's perspective. I'll flip that board around to get White's perspective here. Wonderful time with the white pieces. Playing a London setup. And Levy, um, Andrew Tank has a lot of experience playing the London as white. So would you mm-hmm. play it against him if you had the white pieces? Well, I think the London is such a universal opportunity to just get a playable position. It doesn't really matter who you play it against or uh, whether, you know, someone plays it against you, but you should know kind of the ins and outs of your own system. And Andrew Tang, well, right before this move got on the board, had a very comfortable position. So this new way of playing against the London without moving the B8 Knight, just putting it on D7. Yeah. Uh, but now he just, you know, he's in trouble. So wonderful time. Winning the tactical exchanges Ooh. and yeah. Ooh. And they won the H7 pawn as well. And he's having a wonderful time, I guess you could say. But watch out for the H file. It's the one thing you have to make sure you don't. Okay, that's why the bishop came to G2. And now the king is much safer. Now just make use of your extra piece. Play rook to D1, hit the D5 pawn, play E4. The king's on E7, so you can check and hit that king first. Watch out, rook H1 check is ooh. Yeah, Queen 65 came with the check, but it was almost a mating throughout the Rook H1 check. So one of the things that I mentioned yesterday, and I said this earlier, uh, chat, is that every single player in this tournament, uh, probably above, above 2,900, has gotten there for a reason. There is something that they do really, really well compared to the, you know, the field, and Queen F6 is mate, yep. So uh, Wonderful Time is really good at finding mates in one. No. So the thing that you can do really well in bullet is navigate the waters of a tactical position. You can, when you're winning, seize the initiative and convert it into a win without any problems. What yeah. some other players are really good at, namely Alexander Bortnik, he's really good at defending. He's extremely good at defending. Danny and I saw a game yesterday where he pulled a rabbit out of a hat to win, or he pulled, you know, he pulled a, an incorrect photo of a grandmaster out of a telephone to win. Uh, <laughs> Uh, because he he did basically all sorts of witchcraft, and then he went from completely lost to completely winning when he was already like, you know, 10 out of 11 or something. He was playing someone at the top, and he was still winning games. Meanwhile, Genghis Khan has defeated Khalil Musavi. We no longer have any perfect scores. Yep. So, you know, we can, we see that Musavi lost finally i mean i'm sure a lot of players are happy about that but i wonder how that's going to play out because musabi is someone i'm not really that familiar with and a lot of these top guys are probably like can i get him on the next pairing because that's an easier quote unquote easier opponent than playing your mvls or playing your arabic falcons so you know at some point these players who are doing really well in the early stages and if they're not they can't keep the pace then the other top players will be very happy to start taking points off of them yeah, but I, I mean, I also have to say, I feel like if, if, a, if a third of the, the tournament is already gone and, okay, we can watch Khalil versus Naradiski. Naradiski has stormed back. He's got seven and a half out of nine. Um, two things I should say about the Swiss format. First of all, if you're playing well and you're kind of hanging around the top 10, uh, you don't really care who you play because you're going to play everybody over 25 rounds, right? Especially yeah. in the Swiss. Um, but but uh, in... In arena tournament, uh, it's going to be a little bit more kind of different because you're not always playing somebody at the top. <laughs> That's yeah. how it is. Yeah, for sure. And taking on F2 in this game, I'm looking at Penguin versus Leon Beast. Uh, 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 four is playable. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, so this um, attack on... The, Penguin GM, he's up material. Um, he's up material against Leon Beast here, and all of a sudden we see that MVL going down to Penguin GM. So for those of you who say, "Oh, Penguin GM can't do it against the very best," he's doing it right now. Um, yeah. All right. So let me. I'm. I'm there with you. Uh, MVL versus. Uh, all right. Yeah, I, I'm always fascinated with Andrew Tang's insane ability to defeat Super GMs. Uh, because yesterday he completely dismantled Alexander Grishuk, uh, and 
many other players. And then, you know, we saw him in, uh, where was that? I believe it was the World Rapid Championship in St. Petersburg. Like when he played against players like Magnus, for example, it's him sitting down at the board, shaking hands uh, with these players that he's played, I don't know, hundreds of times maybe. Uh, and here he is sitting across from them over the board and he's got to maintain focus, whereas he crushes them online all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, so we just saw Tang win. Let's go to Faruja now because, like you said, they're crushing people all the time. That's Faruja's specialty. Faruja only has seven points out of nine, right? So that's a little bit surprising considering how great he was yesterday, but he just won his game over Mikatarian. Um, yeah. So, all right. So, Dulles, that's Daniel Dubov, if I'm not mistaken. He's playing Arabic Falcon. And Dubov is losing to Falcon. That's going to be. Made wow. Him, made him, just made him quickly. Wow, 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 wow. That's amazing. All right. So he, uh, he, uh, he wins here. Let's go to, we've got, uh, we've got Hrant Melkumyan. It's, it's, a, it's a battle of the Armenia Eagles. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rod Chess Moody and Sean Sargusyan. And here, here we see that, all right, it looks like Hrant is losing on the board and on the clock. And, all right, there it is. So he lost his rook. He lost on time. What is what, what are we looking at right now? Like, I haven't even been keeping up with the standings. Genghis Khan is in first place, a nine out of the ten. Yes, Genghis. So, who is Genghis Khan? <laughs> who is Genghis Khan? We can. We there is actually a command uh, exclamation point uh, exclamation point. Who is and then it would be Genghis uh, Federico Perez Ponza. Have you ever played Perez Ponza? Yeah, I think just like in some casual blitz games, but never you know particularly seriously. Yeah, Genghis Khan is well, clearly clearly came to play. Almost three thousand bullet. He's at nine and a half out of ten. The crazy thing is that you play ten games, or you know, round eleven is about to begin. You play ten games. You have nine and a half. You think you can like just kind of chill out and, uh, oh man, uh, you still got fifteen rounds to go. So where do we go now? I mean, what, should we? I guess we just. Check in on Genghis Khan. If he's leading the tournament, yeah. feels like that's the player that everyone's got to keep their eyes on. Oh, and Naroditsky. We haven't seen enough Naroditsky today, or any Naroditsky, I should say. So let's keep our eye on this game where Naroditsky with the white pieces against Genghis Khan, he plays some B3 setup, making Hikaru Nakamura prep. Wait, oh, Bishop takes F6 didn't work because the queen would have taken back on F6, hitting the rook on A1. So there are tactics that you can play in situations like that where the bishop on G4 would be hanging. But here, Naroditsky is fortunate as opposed to these double C pawns, which sometimes can be good for an attack. Watch out for knight takes a four sacrifices with rook to B. Robert, this is crazy. What? No, that's a great oh, move. There's a pin. Knight C4. Play knight C4. Oh, oh but then you, then you take on E3 and take on D1, so it doesn't work out anyway. But you have to do it. Play against the weak pawns. So get into an end game. You're worse, but you can survive this. And that was knight C4 is a good response. By Nerdisky, and he played it pretty quickly. So knight takes E5, take on D1 back, take on C6. All right, or take a knight c4, win a5. Okay, go knight c4, there you go. Take that pawn a5. This isn't bad at all. Yeah, this outside pass pawn will give him great chances to go a5, a6, a7. Or go f4, don't lose your f pawn. Oh, no, you could have played a6, a7, and then knight b8. If oh, you're so C. right. He's winning. Bishop a6 to b7. Oh, you can't do it yet because the e4 pawn falls. But knight e5 first. Now knight back oh, but knight e5 hangs a7. Now black is just much better. You know, black is, well, black is yeah. just winning. There is no much better anymore. It's just winning. Um, yeah. Wow, yeah. Uh, this, this is really clutch. Hey, if you could beat Naroditsky with the black pieces, you can basically do anything you'd like in this tournament. And I think he's already played Ali Reza, so... Dude, Genghis Khan, man. Who is yeah. that? Well, is he? I mean... Is that like, Ponza, you said? Yeah, that's Ponza. Man, this guy is just on a roll right now. Can't be stopped. He already is... beat Ali Reza. He's beating Naroditsky. I mean, Naroditsky could just resign. No, he's going for stalemate tricks. Unfortunately, he's not... Yeah, just easy move the rook and then it's mate. Yep. Wow. So how Faruja Bortnik, Faruja's up 14 seconds. That's Here's, crazy. What? Flag him. Flag him. Queen F8, not an expected move at all. Queen D5 check. Just 97 he's gonna play now. Yep. Queen E2. Can Bortnik actually get his way get out of this? No way, right? I mean, there's just no way you can predict this many moves. He's moving so quickly. He hasn't spent any time. Uh, oh. What a move! What a move. Burn all the clock time. <laughs> Queen B7, a move you should never play over the board, but a move you play saying you had 1.1 seconds left. You spent most of your time, 0.8 seconds on that move, and then you didn't have time to mate me. So wonderfully done. Penguin GM is 
about to beat Khalil Musavi with the white that's, pieces. That's really impressive. A- Andrew Andrew never fails to amaze me with his with his chess, like especially his online chess. Classically, that you know, it's almost ironic. Classically, you you, you want to play Andrew. You don't want to play him online in Bullet or Blitz. Uh, right. You want to get him in a long time control. Whereas a lot of people. <laughs> Uh, you know, for, for, for them, for them, it might be, might be the reverse, especially club level players. They like to have that extra time and they kind of hate being online, but uh, Robert Kleinebeer, board two against Garuja. This guy, Whoa. Minnesota blizzard MVP of the season. Uh, what a guy. And he's got nine out of 11 at the moment. Wow. Yeah. I have that game up. I also have the game with the Kangas, uh, Genghis Khan is a Kangas. I mix them together in Penguin Jam. And just a quick shout out to all, Nearly 5,000 of you in, in the chat here on Twitch. Great to see everyone following the Bullet Chess Championship action. Let's get hype. Let's get some hype here. I see Nakul cool Bomb using my email with the oh boy. But, I mean, let's talk about this Kleinbeer game with the white pieces. This looks like a Sicilian gone right for him uh, because Black can't castle. Black can't move this bishop from F8 without losing G7. So it looks like Kleinbeer is in good shape to pick up another victory. Ooh, take on B7. Go for the attack. G7 is now protected. That was nice for Ferruja there. But D7 falls, and white is Yep. Up. Yep, white. just bring the bishop back to D3. Take a chill. Uh, you know what else is pretty chill? I think we got a, we got a $5 donut. We missed it, guys, and uh, we appreciate, appreciate our producers letting us know what's going on behind the scenes while we have our eyes glued on the screen. Uh, hopefully you guys have your eyes glued on the screen as well. This is, this is fast-paced action. This is basically the midpoint of this event. You haven't even had a moment to breathe. Hey, shout out Studio C. Studio so, C. Aaron is, uh, and Josh, brother Josh. And okay, you if when I see this game, Levy, I think for Kleinabir for he needs to move more quickly. Beerton oh. needs to move fast. What he's trying to go for back rank mason, rook d8, play h5. Just break open that king. King safety is so essential in bullet chess. Because yeah. if you just start setting moves thinking you're gonna get checkmate, like h5 is coming to break open the king side. Okay, can't do it yet. The bishop's hanging there. H5. Break it open. Queen g5 check. Queen h6 check. Queen takes h5. Yep. Queen takes h5. Easy peasy. And he's got to keep the pressure on. Again, this is this is Rook where takes, the... Uh, yeah. Rook, I was going to say Rook takes d7 was an option there, but probably not the best. Rook a1. Now this knight is going to have all sorts of problems. What's he doing? Where's that rook going? Is he going to bring it? Oh, he, look at this <laughs> ring around the rosy. Two <laughs> h6. It, it probably wasn't even best, but that's hilarious. We'll, we'll, we like to see it. Oh, queen b4 check. Queen b7. Just go with the check. Queen F3. Pre move that. Oh, Queen F3. And there it is. He blundered, he blundered the knight. Finally. But he's not no time. Rook D4. Just pre move that. Just pre move the is always oh. good. Take with the take, bishop. You're take, take everything. Boom. Take bishop E6. Six. Queen D8. No, he's not going to win on time. Oh, oh but he's going to oh, secure draw. <laughs> what an anticipatory move. He, he pre moved the Queen takes Rook there. Oh my gosh. I literally <sighs> shook. I shook there. That was I mean, he point seven seconds left, and he pre moved queen takes d four. You see that? Yeah. He wow. Went from point seven to point six. He pre moved the right thing there. That was sick. Oh my god. Wow, that was amazing. Wow. Can't wow. pre move fast enough. No, I mean it, it. No one's on mobile. It's just your nerves get the best of you. Robert Genghis Khan, that's Ponza, has now a two point lead. Yeah. A two point lead. He's dominating. He is dominating. And here we see his game against Arabic Falcon. So the whole tournament is rooting for Arabic Falcon here because Genghis Khan has a huge lead right now. And he's trying to break 3,000 rating as well. Right? He's 2984, Arabic Falcon 3014. I like the setup for white. Black's using some time here. Levy, what do you think? Good chances for Arabic? Yeah, I think I, I like these setups quite a bit for white. Now, I could be a little bit biased. Basically, all you have to do is repel this knight on e5. And then this is what black has to do. Black is basically uh, doing a metaphorical eagle jump. I don't know if anybody saw Nurmagomedov versus McGregor. And I mean, I don't, make, I don't mean to make a lot of ties to a physical combat here. This is chess, after all. But uh, when you jump over that cage into the uh, enemy training camp, this is basically what you're doing. This is the equivalent. Uh, it's rugged, it's nasty, and I mean, look at this. We've got a rook on b4 taking on the queen side, the queen hanging out on g6 completely. Oh, that's so nice. Bishop e8, Robert. Yep. Bishop, Bishop e8. When knight e4 comes, take on f6, and the queen hangs on d8 too. So this is definitely winning for white. You have to yeah. take the rook because your bishop's pin. Whoa! What? Take on g7, an extra piece for Mr. Falcon, and then also an extra 13 seconds on the clock. 
Yeah, the, the good thing is that uh, Arabic Falcon has maintained very, very extensive pressure on his opponent. And now it's just about conversion. Look at this. He's not shook. The C pawn isn't going anywhere. C3, you just take E5, take C3. Now C3 is still covered. Take gobble, it. gobble, and Black resigns. Thanksgiving came early. Gobble, gobble. Yeah. yeah. Well, we like... So let go. Is he streaming, by the way, right now? I don't know if he's actually streaming while playing. We know he's not playing on his phone, or at least if he is playing on his phone, it's not what we saw earlier. Mm. And by the way, we have a, we have a marquee matchup. 15 seconds left. Ferruja, Daniel Naroditsky. Uh, I, I urge our developers to find how many times these two have played each other. Now, most of those games are insane hyper bullet matches, but I'm pretty certain I have seen them play to where one side won 100 games. Now, that could be an exaggeration, but... I'm fairly certain Daniel Naroditsky has won 50 games against Ferruja in a match. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, these two are addicts, and I'm not even sure in a healthy way, okay? You can be <laughs> addicted to orange juice, and you could be addicted to other things that are orange but are not juice. So, uh, knight f4 takes on take, h5. Take up six. You made a draw. At the very least, Ferruja makes a draw here. Naroditsky's too fast, so he's going to win on the clock, but it looks like Ferruja is going to hold because no mating material for black. Oh my gosh, is Naroditsky going to lose on time? Is that how fast Ferruja is? No. Whoa. He almost had it, Levy. He almost yeah, had it. Crazy. And by the way, I spot, very quickly spotted a tactic. I don't even know where it was, but somewhere <laughs> around these parts, I like, rook, there's some rook takes d6 move. I move 55 for white. I had seen it really quickly at the corner of my eye. The point is b7, rook b6, knight c6. And if you take, I'm throwing to promote. If you take my pawn on b7, knight da check. I saw it actually in the moment, but I didn't want to say it to ruin the flow. But there wow. was a beautiful tactic winning there. So, do you guys see that? Ferruja has played Naroditsky 2,300 times. 2,300? Wow. There's people in the chat that have never played 2,300 games. Whoa. These that's... guys have played 2,300 times against each other. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. Wait, uh, yo, our top boards are looking pretty crazy. We've got Gandhi Vam versus Miki Tarion. That's Haik Martirosian of the Armenia Eagles. Anybody that doesn't know Pro Chess League, we've got a whole host of amazing things coming up. First of all, Pro Chess League finals tickets went on sale. I don't know if we, we've definitely got a graphic for that, and we've got a lot of games going on. But we also have Fidusayev versus Nihal Sarin. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask, like, who's going to be a, a, a prodigy making a run at the World Championship? Do you think it's Nihal Sarin, or do you think it's Ali Reza first? Or do you think it's Kleinabir, Robert, third place? <laughs> Well, I'll go to the Kleinabir game because it's uh, the player in first place getting his con. But there's also Nerdiski versus Grishuk, by the way. But to answer your question, um, Ali Reza has to be first, right? He's the same age as Niall Sarin, maybe yeah. one year older and much higher rated. And obviously, Niall Sarin is an incredible talent. So is uh, Pragnananda. So is a million other young players. But right, right now, it's all about Ferruja, not just because of the bullet skills. His classical rating is nearly 2660 or something like that. So he's playing amazing chess. And right now, Speaking of amazing chess, Kleinabir with the black pieces against Genghis Khan, he's much better on the board. He has an attack that's just heating up on the queen side here. The b3 pawn is about to be in big trouble. And rook f3, game over. Dang. Oh, that's so nice. That I liked queen a4 as well. I think there was queen a4 instead of even taking on e4. But okay, I mean, these guys know what they're doing. D3 okay. comes next. You have to play. Oh, D3, play D3. That's, <laughs> mad. that's disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> Oh my gosh, how do you mate now? How do you deliver the knockout? That nice either is a really good move. No. Wait, whoa, what is this? Trading is definitely not correct here. What? What is Klein of you doing? Yeah, he's up on time though. So he's still he still has an attack. Queen A1. Okay, he should have queen. I, 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 okay, well now yeah. Oh, oh he's queen! Oh, he hung his queen! Oh my god! He hung his queen for no reason. He was on the clock too. Oh, that, oh my! Oh, I'm oh I'm in pain. Oh my gosh! Oh, I'm in pain. Oh my, oh my gosh! I feel so bad for him. Oh my! He was winning the whole game, and he's and now, why? Why'd he do that? I, I I love the discrepancy. I don't know if you see the game chat, Robert, but do you see the discrepancy in the game chat? Some Klein of beer types after every single game. This game, he typed oops. Whereas yeah. the next person's like, no. <laughs> oh my gosh. And was he trying to pre-move? He, he made that move instantly. You see that? I look at his clock. He spent 0. 0.1 seconds without playing queen d5, which means he was pre-moving. Queen takes knight because it's check. I guess he forgot that the king could just 
and so the knight can block. The king doesn't have to move when you're in check, and he just hung his queen. That He was up time. He didn't need to do that. Oh, he just forgot that knights go backwards, which unfortunately is not a software glitch. That's 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 actually that's actually a rule in chess, everybody. You're allowed to move a knight to get out of a check. Oh, just man. So happens. Yeah. That hurts. Oh, that made me freak out. I'm, I'm, I'm still in pain. I can't believe. I mean, how could you even pre-move that, though? That's the first thing that I glanced at. There's a king and a knight under attack. You block both. I mean, just... But why would you pre-move? You're up six seconds. You have a better position. Like, there are obviously most of the time you want to get a good pre-move in. But at that moment, there was no reason to do that. It was so unnecessary. And I'm glancing at the standings. Genghis Khan's up a point and a half on the field with Penguin GM, Faruja, and Leon Beast there in places two through four. Sib Elephant sitting there at ten and a half as well. We haven't checked out any of Sib Elephant's games. but You know who that is, right? That's Artemiev. That's Artemiev? Yes, that's Artemiev. That's our guy. How have we not looked at his games? What's oh, well, here he is. I mean, he had, he had to earn his spot into, you know, into the top 10, and he's number five right now sitting pretty. I actually prefer the way the games have been going today, where it's a bunch of, like, you know, puppies trying to climb to the top and, and, and get the treat, uh, not to kind of uh, call everybody in, in, in the field a, uh, a, a small animal, but that's, the, you know, the, the only nice analogy I could think of there. Uh, Yesterday, yeah. we saw like three players running away with it. Sorry, what did you ooh at? Faruja versus Penguin, because they have their matchup right now. And there's a tactic that it didn't necessarily gain too much. You get a pawn for white, but Faruja's in big trouble here against Penguin. <laughs> the people have spoken. They want to see Penguin and Faruja. I was looking at uh, Nerdiski versus Artemia, because I guess, you know, in a classical time, that would be a much more interesting game to me. But of course, in Bullet, well, you got to respect Faruja and Penguin here. And it looks like Penguin just dominating. Up a pawn, has the bishop. That bishop's long-range piece covering all the dark scores. Rookie seven traps the queen. Oh, no, it doesn't. The queen can then go to c6, but could have played rookie seven and doubled the rooks on the uh, seventh rank. It's, it's amazing that it took us 15 rounds of chess to get this matchup, but the, again, that ties back to what I said. Today is a lot of people climbing over each other. You lose a game, then you win a game. Someone else before you who won a couple games loses to somebody because everybody is so good. And if they were playing best of fives against each other, I think we could actually, with relative ease, pick out who would win best of fives. But yeah. uh, meanwhile, Naraditsky drew against Artemiev. I mean, what, would Naraditsky draw against Artemiev in a classical game? Who knows? Honestly, in a, in a game, in a match of five or ten in classical, I give a big advantage to Artemiev, right? But uh, this is bullet. And this is online bullet, and people are more experienced. And look at this. We see just Penguin cleaning a house against Ali Reza. Ali wow. Reza is far from his peak far from his peak. yeah he you know he's not dominating the way he did yesterday in fact he's struggling and well there's still plenty of time left right there's so many rounds remaining that he can come back but props to penguin gm because oh krishuk just won a arabic falcons rook on h3 he made it him wow he, oh my god I, I saw the rook hanging on h3 but f6 is checkmate oh my gosh krishuk you're the legend can you? I mean, is it possible to give Grishuk any bigger of a shout out? That guy is just such a beast. He just made it the dude's king on G5. Wow. Oh. Just so, things happen so quickly that I'm thinking about one thing, talking about another, and then reacting to a third and all at once. I, I'm really, I'm really excited about one element in particular about this tournament is that when there's like half the game's done and then you click on the little board icon to see who's still playing in a in a crazy scramble you realize that there's so many 2,600 plus GMs in this tournament. Uh, and that's not a chess.com bullet reference. That's their actual ELO. Like we have some of the best players in the world internationally competing. Like for example, I just saw Ituri Zaga. What? I didn't know he was playing. We've got Maxim uh, Lugovsk uh, Lugovskoy. That's you know Russian player playing against Parhamov. Obviously we've talked about Parhamov at length. Uh, I don't know, a, a curious stat, I don't know if we can pull this up. We've got at the moment 20, you know, 270 players. How many countries are being represented in this field? That's, That's always amazing. Question. Like, and of course, players play for different federations and live in different places, but it's, it's just fascinating how, how many people boot up their computer, you know, plug in their mouse, hashtag Robert needs a new mouse, hashtag yep. that $5 donation will go to Robert's new mouse. You want, you want to see this mouse? We'll show the mouse real quick. Look at this mouse. Everybody, take a look at that. that this is like a net mouse of 1995. So, yeah, I definitely need a new mouse. But we have Grishuk versus wow. K right now. This is a big-time matchup. And Grishuk is saying, I'm already qualified for the 
uh, Bojas Championship, but I want to win this qualifier from Champ Kier, where he beat Veslin Topalov. Shout out, Chris Shug, you're a legend. But here, what the white piece is, is sort of this structure where white wants to go take on F7 and take on E6. Like you would mm -hmm. love to open up this bishop. But now the knight's going to D5. Maybe you swing this bishop to C2 and hit H7. Right, you just switch gears and go for the king side attack. Black isn't really well prepared to defend it. There are no pieces on that side of the board. And so if I'm, okay, when bishop d, uh, d2 is stop f6 from forking the bishop of the knight, here, please play bishop c2. Do it for me, Stash. Oh, you, now you're forced to do it. You had no choice. Yes, now he's to a4. Do it. And go uh, mate, mate this guy. Mate this guy. Ooh, ooh. I know we've been focusing on one game, and I don't mean to. I don't mean to cut off this, you know, this hype and excitement. I just want. I'm just completely mind blown at our list of games, and I just wanted to look at it before one of them went away with a decisive result. Board one is Grishug versus Ponsa. Board two is Zhang versus Penguin. Board three is Perusha versus MVL. Board four is Bortnik versus Naraditsky. Board five is Fedeseya versus Gandivam. I mean, board <laughs> six is Artemyev <laughs> versus Arabic Falcon. That's like, crazy. This, like, crazy what, this is an insane field. I mean, I'm so, I'm so hyped right now. This is crazy. I mean, I love this. This is my favorite. Is this bull like pro chess league? And we got to give a shout out when we get a break to the pro chess league finals coming your way in San Francisco in May. But that kind of quick time control when everything's happening at the same time, I love it. It really gets me energized. And right now, Grishuk with the white pieces, he is even on material has the two bishops. The bishop on b3 is a giant pawn. It's a glorified pawn at the moment. You would love to get that in the action, but the knights come to c5. You take it. Opposite color bishops. Grishuk is down on the clock. So even though this Grishuk is, is shook. Yeah, <laughs> F5, is, nice. Oh, look, that's a big pawn. So play e5, get a pass pawn. Only one side is a pass pawn here. It is black. You're not going to really get to... Oh, did he drop his g-pawn? He did. And bishop d6 check. Take this g-pawn. Run your king oh. back. Play g5, f4, etc. Win on the clock, Genghis Khan. I've never this rooted is... for you before. You're a pretty evil guy in history, but I am rooting for you right now. Yeah, this is the only time we'll make an exception. These pawns on the king side are vicious, and Grishuk simply has no time. F3 is coming. Ah! Uh... Oh, he stopped. He stopped them. Bishop of one. King e4. King... Oh, nice move. G2. You wouldn't play that in a real game, but now that your opponent has no time, he's not. He has no time. Yep. He needs to take that pawn to make a draw. Yep. Woo! So what happened this round? Naroditsky beats Bortnik. Genghis beats Grishuk. Um, I see that Hammer beat Dubov. Jeffrey Zhang lost to Penguin. Um, who else? Uh, Faruja beat MVL. Gosh, this tournament's amazing. This is, this is unbelievable. We've got Genghis with 14. Penguin, I, I mean, I'm sure they've played, but maybe not. I think we're going to see, like, Penguin versus Artemyev. Or, uh, yeah, we have a crazy field of 12s. And, I mean, all the 11 and a halves are, are, are trying to pop in there as well. So we're about to see what happens in this round. Man, let's get some, let's get some hype in the chat because I'm freaking hyped. I don't say that very often. I'm usually just like talking about the chess moves, but I love this. This is just so fun to see this unfold. Players just really just playing instant moves. Some of them are terrible. Some of them are amazing. We have Naroditsky playing against Penguin GM right now. We have, let's go to who's Genghis playing. Genghis is playing Siberian, oh, Artemia versus Genghis K. I feel like that's our matchup right now because I'm yep. looking at it from Artemia's perspective. He's a much stronger player. He's hopped into the top 15 in the world. Right, this guy is a monster. He's been on the biggest rise of any player on the planet. Got to give him the respect he deserves. He's a speed chess champion, phenom, and here he's taking on Genghis K. He's playing a little bit slowly in the opening. He's down a couple seconds here. That might not seem to mean much. Play G5, play G4, play G5 here. Take on H2. Yep. There it is. There it is, there G4. Is. And if Knight G5, then you just, okay, Knight E5 was better. I think he could have actually played Knight G5, Queen F4, and traded the Queen. And then the Knight on G5 was pretty strong. You're right. You're absolutely right. And this G4 pawn actually might backfire. So my idea to put, ooh, I like that. He did. So if they're queen G4, there's no queen takes G7. That way he can take on E5. Next, rook H5. Mm -hmm. Give me your E pawn. And black says, look at my center. It's much stronger. This is a healthy end game for black here. Yep. Very healthy end game. I thought knight D3, there was a check on C1, but the king had moved. You know, always play king B1 yep. uh, to avoid all this, all this type of stuff. This is a great position. One, o one other thing I want to indicate for everybody uh, Sib Elephant is Artemyev. We saw European individual, individual championship winner of this year. Uh, so he started this tournament with a slightly lower bullet rating because he probably doesn't play on this account that much. Uh, so right now he's 29.50, but he's still gaining a bit of provisional bonus. So he probably will end the tournament as a 3,000 rated player, as he should, because yep. I've never seen the guy play bullet. I mean, these guys don't log in that much to play bullet games. Uh, you know one other funny stat? He recently won the European individual championship where he scored... A perfect 
five and oh with the white pieces. Yep. And I think he made some draws with black, won some games. Extremely balanced player, great positional understanding, mixed with a good, you know, kind of understanding of theory and monster, just supremely good. Unfortunately for him, he's in trouble right now. He is uh, playing with the black. Oh, he's up time. Actually, he was down like five seconds for most of this mm -hmm. game. And now his king is in trouble. So, okay, he's going to shore up his king's out with king to b7, queen b5 here. Okay, I would have gone for the a6 score, but he's going for a8. Queen 8 would be make king c6. What a brave move. King to b5. Can't stop, won't stop. Queen c6. There's no rook a5 check. So your king is safe. Whatever queen before. Make king c4. C4. Run, Run the king to d3. Run that king to d3. Do it. He's going to do it. Oh, don't make it. Yes. Yes. Go. Oh, go my go. gosh, Robert. This is nuts. <laughs> this is nuts. Go, go d4. Nice move. What? <laughs> Take on g3. Oh, he traded the queens. What a genius. What? Take on g3. Just I can't move. breathe. Just move. He won. He won this game. He won this game. I'm so hyped. And there I'm, you see it. There, oh my there, gosh. There I'm you see so it. Hyped. There you see it. Plus 22. He's gonna he's gonna be a 3K. He's gonna be a 3K. Can, Maybe we, just, he'll be can we talk about this king run? <laughs> <laughs> that king ran all the way to F1 to G2. Like that is bravery. Oh my god, Levy. I'm loving this. How many moves with this game? This game was 67 moves with, you know, obviously some fill-in. I, I wouldn't be surprised if a, if a third of that was that was the, the king moving. I mean, I mean, just can't stop, won't stop, right? Like, that's just awesome. Can, I mean, can anybody stop this dude? Can anybody stop Vladislav Artemia? The answer is probably be, no. Probably not. Probably not. He's now a point out of first. And he's playing Penguin. So we got to check in on that game. I know that Genghis Khan's in first place, but we've given Genghis a ton of love. Well, we'll continue looking at his games down the stretch. But let's look at how Penguin versus Artemiev goes because, while well, they're point behind. They can catch up soon. So we need to focus on this action. Shout out to One-Legged Parrot for the sub with Twitch Prime. I'm seeing everybody in the chat. Liquidator, Z Cottrell, Rula Garris, Pink Floyded. Everybody, thank you for being here. Plicka, I see you. But Levy, what do you make about this position here with Penguin with the white pieces against Elephant? Penguin is up a pawn, but is lacking some development on the queen side. So this is this D take C5 uh, London. And I honestly think that we <laughs> we could get a lesson out of this game, Robert, how to play these positions. Because uh, Artemiev is, is detonating some sort of, or maybe not, because he's down like 10 seconds on the clock. I was thinking that he worked out the opening problems, but I feel as though oh, Andrew that was, was, yeah. that was a huge blunder. He blundered with knight c3 because after queen takes e5, your rook on a1 is going to be hanging and your knight c3 and their discoveries in the king on e1. He blundered really badly there. Oh, no. And, and there goes the piece. Wow. We just saw Artemyev uh, absolutely crush Penguin in the opening. Just, <laughs> I mean, dismantling the, uh, the London that Andrew is known for. Just queen f6 now back. You're going to, you know, he's going to play queen e2 and... Uh, G8, rook G8 at some point. This uh, he, is, opened, he opened the second rank there. This and is crazy. King H8, don't go 92 check. 92 check was looked good, but it wouldn't have worked out. So let's, oh, oh no, it oh. blundered his queen. Take on G2. Take on G2. Rook takes G2. Oh. He, found, he found it. Knight of four check. He That's found brilliant. It. Rook takes G2 is a quadruple exclam. Queen G2, knight of four. He found it. Yes. Oh my God, I'm so hyped here. He's up 10 or six seconds as well. Tang is phenomenal, but unfortunately for him, he ran into the best chess player on the planet right now. Okay, obviously Magnus Carlsen is the best player on the planet, but the hottest player on the planet is Vladislav Artemiev. He won the European individual. He's gained a million rating points. The sky's the limit for this young player from Russia. Rook C5 check, knight, knight of six check. Oh, take the rook, free rook. Now it's easy. This, th this dude is just insane. This is the game that he might actually break. Uh... He might actually break uh, 3K. It might be close, though. He, he might break my diaphragm because I'm yelling and just, like, getting so into this that, like, my, I'm hurting. I'm legitimately hurting right there. Robert, there it is, plus 24. He's a 3K player now. He deserves it. He deserves every point and, and then some. And I pull up Genghis Khan's game because he's three seconds left. He's up three pawns for a bishop, and so he can't lose. That's the good news for Genghis Khan. But can he flag his opponent somehow? Sean Sergisian up on the clock. He's been a pro chess league legend for the Armenian Eagles. It looks like it's going to fizzle out to a draw. Nice move. Bishop takes b5, knowing your opponent's pre-moving. And we get an ambulance. And that ambulance is for everybody else in the field besides Artemia because Artemia is on a roll, and he's trying to win this event. Yeah. Woo! Can, can, we, can we just say that like we've got seven game we've got seven rounds remaining and about i don't know 25 to 30 players that can win this thing 
oh my gosh, 25 to 30. I haven't even been looking at the standings, if I'm being honest with you. Like we see Hrant Malkumian at 13 out of 18. Hrant, we have big fish. It's Vlad, uh, Vladimir Fedoseyev at 13 out of 18. Bortnik, Faruja, Penguin, Duda at 13 and a half. Wow, this list is crazy. Jeffrey Jean with 12 and a half. It's only two points behind the leader and there's seven rounds left. Oh man, oh man. I don't even know what to say anymore. This is this is too much. We're about to get round nineteen underway. Who's oh, wow? Are you? You know what? We got, we got to stick here, Robert. Uh, Who's sticking to? Artemyev versus MBL. Artemyev, let's go, buddy. Wait, what is MBL doing with Elyokin here? Can't do that. And yes, I see that uh, ticker there. Artemyev will be playing in the Speed Chess Championship this year. He's just such a legend. He's one of the best blitz players in the world. And people used to call him a blitz specialist. I'm glad that title has gone away because he is just an amazing player overall. And so with the white pieces right now, he has a solid setup, more space to use. But Levy, how do you feel about this sort of Elyokin turned Scandi? Honestly, I think for Rabin and Blitz, this is a perfectly viable weapon. I mean, if even, you know, I got to say, even for classical, you, you put an opening in the right hands, someone's going to get the job. And look at this oh, knight. It was a blunder. What was, what was knight B4? He forgot the queen was protected on C2. I can't even, I can't even finish my sentences. Like, I, I, was about, I was about to make, like, a statement about the opening or something like that, and, and then absolute fireworks broke out. Somebody hit a bottle over someone's head, and now you got a bar <laughs> fight going on. Artemia, and, and <laughs> Artemia versus Lion Beast. This is completely crazy. Uh, I, like, I, I like the Alakine. Aliohin. We know whichever pronunciation you'd like, but uh, I'm, I'm a fan of it. And actually, a recent book published on Rapid and Blitz repertoire by Evgeny Sveshnikov does recommend uh, the Alyokin defense. So interesting. Did not did not see that book, and that's very interesting to hear because it's kind of maligned at the highest levels. And here, take on a7, go rook b7, go knight h4 to f5, play pawn to g4. Knight h4 works here because there's a check on f5, but okay, so play g4, knight f5 check, g4. Whoa, Duda is on a six game winning streak as of round 18. I didn't even know that. Duda, also the legend. Wow, is what is the longest winning streak in this kind of uh, in this kind of event? I think yesterday Ferruja said it. I think Ferruja won like 12 in a row. He adopted the field or something along those lines. Uh, 92, knight of four, and is bishop that... d4. Bishop d4 there was paralyzing, oh. but okay. I mean, there it, oh, is. there it is. Game over. Knight h5 check wins the piece. Another win for the elephant. Let's go to Genghis Khan because where is he drew his game? So we let's not go there. Let's go to Pol oh sorry, Polish Fighter is playing Genghis Khan. Never mind. He did not draw his game. And it should be a draw because it's opposite colored bishops. And look at this. <laughs> They're just pre-moving everywhere. That king went from E8 to F1 in like a second. So and the interesting thing here is that uh, okay, they repeat it, but actually I think they have enough time to get the 50 the 50 move rule. Yes. They do. So Sean so Ferruja. Uh oh, Farouge is down 10 seconds and losing on the board. Man, this Shant Sargassian character. Wait, I'm looking at the pieces going the wrong way. Yeah, me too. Like, <laughs> I was looking at it backwards. Oh my gosh, I'm looking from black side. Let's turn from white side. What's going on? This is such a headache. White started with the king on E1. This is super confusing. So Farouge has the black pieces and is winning. That is hilarious. That is so. <laughs> but he's got no time. Can he mate? Can he do it? If anyone can do it, Farouge can. If Arusha wins this game, he secures himself and, I mean, he, wait, he's struggling. He's, oh. he's not doing this quickly enough. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's only got seven more moves. Can he do it? Oh, oh, it's, it's oh, he mate. Did, he did it. He, he did, did it. Did it. Mate. He, he did it. He did it. No, he missed it. He missed it. He, he, missed it. Missed it. he got it. He did it. One. He did it. <laughs> oh, my God. What a legend. Oh, my God. How did he pull that off? He missed mate in one, but he found the mate anyway. How did he do that? Faruja, oh. you're a hero, and you're the hero not that we deserve, you're the hero we need. Oh, oh my god. Faruja. Oh, we got Artemia versus Duda. We have no shortage of great games here, and that means that we have in the standings right now, Siberian Elephant tied for first with Genghis Khan. I'm so hyped. Shout out to the over 6,000 people here in the chat with us who are just going crazy over that checkmate. <laughs> oh this my is god. Can we, can, we get, can we just, like, force the players into 25 more rounds? I mean, I don't care if this is gladiator style and we're sitting, you know, lofty up in our, up in our homes doing commentary while, the, you know, they're spilling blood out on the battlefield. Let, you know, let's, let, let's go. This is, oh this is really great. Gosh, I'm hurting. I honestly am in pain right now. There's physical agony happening <laughs> in my body because I've just been yelling and just been going just, like, full steam. There's no chill here. All right, watch out for 94. 
Oh, oh, he, uh, oh, Robert, Robert, he's watching out for knight e4. Well, I think black's just better here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The structure definitely is good for black in these in these kind of positions. These London positions where white plays e takes f4. White's got to do a certain type of uh, certain type of setup uh, to get to get healthy, rather than going into the uh, the deep depths. Not because I don't know it. I totally don't know it. By the way, it's because we're playing bullet. And look at this queen c3. Now black is suddenly taking over the initiative. Yeah, I would want queen to c1 even. But the problem with queen to c1 is queen a6 comes at the right moment to get into black's camp. So Watch out for your g6 pawn. Knight f5, a good move trading. This is probably a level game at this point. Queen e6, always possible. Look at him getting aggressive, though. Is it oh. king e6? White's pawn structure issues have been solved, though. He's, he's oh. doing well. Queen h7 is nice. Yeah. Uh-oh. Queen e6, and now black has to bail. Queen e4 queen check. Four. Queen e1 check. Queen e4 check back. King h2. Queen f3. Oh, he took that pawn. I wouldn't have done that. Oh, I don't like that at all, actually. I think white is just pushing now. G4, G, literally white is pushing now. G, uh, what does black do, Robert? Nothing. He's got no checks. He's got no checks. He's in, he's in big trouble here. There goes the pawn. He's losing. He, queen G5 check. Queen H, oh, can't go queen H5. Wow, look at this geometry. He's got not a single check. Wow. Duda. Duda takes away all the checks from that queen there. Beautiful. That's a beautiful way to win the game, get a queen next. Ferruja, wonderful time. Why does Ferruja have no time? Oh, he's dead, he's dead lost. I think he tilted and, and he, he must have disconnected. So he's now mm. below 3,200 for the first time. And I, I mean, I, I have no idea. Uh, oh, Georg Meyer. Georg Meyer is down a full queen. So he's losing to Sean Sargassian. Why did Sean give up his queen there? I thought it's easier to win with the queen on the board, but he's going to flag Georg Meyer. And you said Ali Reyes is under 3,200. That's shocking to see. I mean, you know, someone just joked in the chat. Uh, a Petkov says, below 3,200, Potzer. Nah, I mean, obviously just... You know, phenomenal player, but we're not used to that low rating, quote unquote, low rating from him. Can we just also say, I know we've got some games wrapping up here, but we, we just hit 6,400 viewers. And I, I don't know why I really wanted to point that out. There's 64 squares on the chessboard. Carry on with the time scrambles. Shout out to everybody. Hopefully we cross 7K at some point. That might have been the nerdiest thing that I said all day. Um, <laughs> but all right, you know, whatever. I went to the gym today too. So, you know, how much, how much you bench, bro? Chat, how, much how much you bench, bro? I don't know, but right now this game between Santo Blue and finally is a draw. But Levy, I'm hurting, man. I'm really hurting. And you said legend, and it made me think. Yesterday, I learned that you could change your Google Home voice to John Legend, and it was. Are you serious? Yeah, it was super creepy, actually. <laughs> like, it's like John Legend, just like in your home talking to you. I, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not gonna lie. One thing I will say, though, yesterday after 20 rounds, I don't know, I, and again, I, we, I, we always have to preface every single statement with, I don't know if we can pull this up. I don't know if we can pull this up so you guys can pull it up. After 20 rounds yesterday, everybody's been wondering what this gray number is by the white score of every player. That's the tie break and the cum uh, cumulative score of your opponents that you've played. Yesterday, 20 rounds in, Ferruja had like a 200 or something. Yeah. Right now, not a single player is even at 190. So this is this is crazy. This is kind of going to show that the scores are lower, and in, in other words, Fruz is not running away with it in the early going, which gives everybody else a good chance. And I, I pulled up the game levy between Penguin GM and Polish Fighter. I don't like Duda's opening choice in a classical game. If you're playing Vladimir Kromnik, go ahead, try to make a draw with the black pieces from this position. But in a bullet game, I think having the better pawn structure is always easier. And okay, well now he got tactically, he made it work. There's problems on the G file. So rook g7, knight f2 here. Play knight f2. Go knight h to f4, h5 to f4, and play knight f2 to... Oh. They're not listening. They're not listening. Definitely would not have done that. I don't like giving my opponent an outside pass pawn. Um, <sighs> F3's hanging. Okay. Protected it. Bishop g5. Nice move there. Lots of pinned pieces. White can hardly move. Yep. He's thinking. This is, this is great. Bishop g5. I always find it amazing. Like, if you... If you look at Polish fighters' cumulative stats, whoa, wow, whoa, that knight's hanging on f4, but then h6 hangs, so we're getting into draw territory. You know, for a draw, maybe. And, Ooh, white's up uh, a pawn. Oh, never mind, never mind. That that's bad. But white is down six seconds. So what's more important, Levy? These six seconds or seven seconds here, or the pawn? You give me any any five anybody in the world except for the five players that I'm thinking of, and the the uh, the pawn matters. Um, but with, uh, with time, it doesn't, it, it, when it comes to penguin, I mean, it, it, it makes no difference. It doesn't matter. If that yes. I think I said that backwards. Time matters unless you're playing penguin, uh, because he's going to catch up. Although that theory is being challenged right now because Polish fighter is really, I think, fighting above, uh, the level that we expected, especially uh -oh. in terms of pre-moves. Yep. C3 there. Oh, you're going to lose the C pawn. King C2 comes next. 
And this is going to be a bit of an issue here for black because you can't keep the rook on a3. Okay, here comes b6. Rook a5, well timed. Take on e5, play rook b5. Or don't play rook b5 yet. Play rook e1. Play rook a1. Okay. Well, he's losing this. This is a yep. lost. Wait, but no time left. 3.8 seconds. Unfortunately, Duda is moving quite slowly here. He's going to get flagged. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Whoa. What? what Duda happened? was up on time the entire, the entire game. What happened? Yep. He just started playing too slowly. And once the situation clarified, Tang moved real quickly. Hey, kind of pink Jake. What's up? Nice. Thank you for the uh, sub there with Twitch Prime. Lucina is right, says Max. And we have Jigalko and Feruja. Last second here. Feruja is about to lose on time. Feruja loses on time. Wow, Feruja loses on time. That's crazy. What's going on? What's going on today? And by the way, Fedoseev beat Artemiev to go into first place. Wow. Yeah. What? So, so the reign of terror for our newly minted 3000 European individual champion is gone. We've got a three-way tie for first and he's not in it. No, he is not. Oh my gosh. Feruja is trying to fight back, but he's he's fallen too far. And that leaves us with Big Fish against Penguin right now for first place and the auto qualifier into the Bullets Championship. I like what Penguin's doing. The Queen on eight thing is nice, but it's not well timed. Knight C3 comes kicking. Oh, this bishop, once it's captured, it's just the light scores are ruined for black for the rest of the game. Here, you can even consider playing D5 followed by E5 ideas. I hate this position for Black now with the Rook on A7. In fact, you're going to lose material for D5. Yeah, you're pro oh, that's even nicer. And then D5 will secure a full piece but and now, not an exchange. Oh, Queen A8. But E4 is hanging, right? Nice. You're right. We've got told you the correct thing there. But two pawns for the piece and opposite colored bishops give Black some chances here. Unfortunately, Fedosev is not one who usually messes up when you're up in a position like this. But fewer pieces remaining, if you can trade Queens off Levy, that's Black's best chance. Because um, without Queens on the board, there's no real attack. And so if you take on D2 now, for example, then it's going to be hard to actually corral those pawns. So, yeah. Nice. Meanwhile, Bortnik is completely destroying Genghis Khan. And really? Yeah. Oh, my it's, gosh. I mean, this is – wait. What is this? Oh, oh wow. You, 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 Bishop, did you hang a rook? Did you do that no, purpose? Bishop, or, uh, well, he's winning in the end game. I mean, he's up a lot of pawns, I think. Yeah, um, he is. But, so he's winning here. He's also doing well on the clock. So I'm going to go back to the Penguin GM game. We own Queen! He hung his queen as soon as I turned back. Oh, my God. Penguin hung his queen as soon what? as he came back to the game. Oh, my gosh. Just here. He went 95. He took the knight because his game made it on f7 or losing the bishop on d4. And he lost his queen. And now it's just easy money for Big Fish. And all of a sudden, Fedoseev jumps in front of this tournament here. Oh, my God. He lost his queen. And back to Bortnik, who's winning this position still. He is doing not so well on the clock, but he should win this game. Just go pawn to c6 of the right. Ooh, okay, would not have sacrificed my rook there, but sometimes you just do things when they feel right. And the bishop d7, the rook on uh, c7 is trapped. Play e5, e6. Play king c5, king b6. Wow, that rook is really trapped. That is really beautiful. Oh, stalemate. Oh, stalemate. stalemate. Oh, he didn't do it because he wants to win on the clock. But that was so such a missed opportunity there. With point one! Oh my god, Genghis Khan won! How? How in the world? <laughs> oh my god. Levy, I can't believe it. Right here, if he had just gone after king d8, king c5, king b6, he's winning. After king d6, rook d7, he has to take and stalemate. And he just tries to win on the clock and he loses. Bortnik, what are you doing, man? Oh my gosh. Oh my, Genghis Khan, you ha the fortune favors the bold, they say. I don't know if you're bold in this game or what, but there was no way that Genghis Khan should have won this. I'm speech. I, I, I don't know what to say. Oh my gosh. <sighs> and we have Genghis versus Anuel now, and we have Big Fish versus Leon Beast. So let's stick with Big Fish versus Leon Beast because MBL can make his presence felt here. But what in the world just happened? Tang hangs a queen, and then Kangas Khan wins because his opponent doesn't make a stalemate. I, I, I still haven't recovered. I guess I have to, right? There's three rounds to go. Yesterday was, was a photo finish. We had three, or I think it was three players basically competing for first, but obviously qualifying in the top four also gets you something, and it's an important thing to, to note. Uh, I think the save is dismantling MVL, by the way. Yes. Just, 
just A3, look at this. Not even, no tactics. Doesn't need any tactics, just just methodically outplaying him. What do we have here? Is I mean, there a it's, tactic? It's just over for Black, if you ask me. Just like positionally, it just busted. So I need to just checkmate you in the G7 square. E6, you'll go F6. But once you go F6, I might even have Queen D7 ideas. Wait, is there a counterattack on the G2 square somehow? Not really. E6 is hanging with check. Bishop takes E6. Rook at four. Bishop E6. Yeah, Bishop E6. And then Rook, oh, Rook, Rook takes F4, Queen D8 mate. Yeah, Rook at four, Queen D8 queen mate. Queen D8 mate. mate. Oh, Boom. he blundered mate. MBL didn't see it coming. But he was in trouble anyway. So that's a big win for Big Fish. Let's go to Genghis Khan versus Anuel here because Genghis needs to keep up the winning streak. Okay, what is even happening here? What's the material? White's up in exchange, but Black seems to have a million pawns. Can I also just say that Anuel, Anuel is a, is a pro chess league player. Uh, I don't believe that Perez Ponza played in the pro chess league, but Anuel was on the Marseille migraines with uh, MVL. And unfortunately, they, they were not able, obviously, to make it to the finals, let alone even the playoffs, I think. But there's always next season. Uh, Anuel played the role of spoiler yesterday, so to speak, because in the last round, uh, he beat Ferruja. And all the top three seeds yesterday lost in the last round, like Candidates 2013. Yep. And yet, you know, they all stay the same spot. Knight D5. Wow, this is crazy. Well, he needs to win this game. He's winning. Like, he just has all the pawns. He's just pushing them very freely. Okay, go C5, C4. There it comes. Look at those pawns. How many pawns do you need? You talk about pawn storms. This yeah. is, uh, <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> take good. Oh, God, he's going to lose on time. Oh, Rook G6 was well played there. He's going to lose, though. He's, I think he's going to lose. He's nervous. I'm nervous for him, really. Take, take the rook. It's a queen. Check. Check a million times. Just check somewhere. Oh, good move. Stalemate! Stalemate! <laughs> Are you kidding me? After all that stalemate? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Robert, I can't do this. Robert, I'm done. I'm done. It hurts too much. It hurts too much. Are you kidding me? I, I need a breath. I need a breath. This king is in stalemate. That's why you always put the king in check if you can. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it hurts so good. It hurts so good, Levy. How are well, you feeling over there? The, the players, the players exchanged words in the chat. <laughs> I hate you. Yes, I oh, hate well. you. And 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 Genghis Khan said I would hate me too. <laughs> and then and then Anuel goes, I really do, with a tongue sticking out face. <laughs> I'm hurt, Levy. Call me a doctor. I'm in pain. Oh my well, god! We, so we got, we got no time, Robert. Robert, we got no time. The game. Right, which, which game? Oh, we need to find what's his face is a big fisher's po Polish fighter. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh! And then Genghis Khan. Who's he playing? Who's Genghis playing? He's playing Nihal Sarin out of nowhere. So let's stay on um, Big Fish because he's in first place. And if he yep. wins this game, he's moving even closer. It was a Trump posse. It looks like it started from B three, uh, Knight of six, Bishop B two, take on like F six and give you. Mm -hmm. Pawns. Looks like a transposition in a way. I played this many times from the white side. I think white objectively is not even doing that hot, but it's a nice blitz opening to play. Here, big fish. Look at the clock situation. He's cruising. Take on f4. D4 is hanging next. Take on f4. D4 is hanging. He blundered a pawn because uh -oh. pawn h4 was hanging. I mean, big fish is just on the money. Or take c4 now. E6 hangs, but I guess rookie one is just mate. If you take d6, wow, this just mate on the board. So yep. please bishop up one first, got to go queen. He could have had a trick there where he allows like, oh, okay, yeah, I was going to say he can allow take d6 and then queen c5 maybe, but this is this is great. Knight b5 was a nice threat. Yep. Queen b4 off in the trade of queens. That's always smart when you have so much material. Taking over the b file, the e file had nowhere to go, right? All these squares were occupied. So take, I would think about sacking my queen, but not do it. Okay, not my pieces. So not time to sack yet. Also, maybe F3 at oh, some point. 94. 94 is a tactic. Okay, now the queen's protected. 94 was about to be a tactic with an F6 hanging. Well, then you had king g7. I think maybe he even played h6 to set that up, that yeah, whole idea. Did. Oh, queen h mate. Oh, it's protected uh -oh. by the rook. Okay, the rook <laughs> saves the day. And the knight is trapped, Robert. Oh, oh that's geez. sick. So just take all the pawns? Uh, wow, rook g2, queen e1 is a threat. Queen queen f2, that looks, that looks awful. Look at the time situation, though. Nine oh, seconds for Duda, man. 27 seconds. Rook B1 wins the bit. Oh, no, Rook F2 check. Okay, take. Play Rook C1. There it is. King G7 or F7. King E6, King E5. Just pre-move. You're going to pre-move your, your way to victory. Um, actually, this is getting not so clear all of a sudden. G3 check. Rook C2 yeah, five, se five seconds is simply not enough time. G just go G2. Just go G2. I go G2 here. 
Okay, he's gonna go f4, f3 instead. Jeez. And king f4, king e3, yeah, he's winning. Wow. How did Genghis do? He drew. Genghis uh, drew. Yeah, he drew. So did Fedosev already lock this up? How are his tie breaks? No. The tie breaks are very close, it looks like, between these players. So what Penguin, it looks like... Sorry, go ahead. Penguin, uh, no, sorry. I was just going to say that Penguin beat Anuel. So Anuel doesn't get to... Anuel is having the carousel of the top seeds now, uh, unfortunately, unsuccessfully, against, uh, against Penguin. So Penguin, after 24 rounds, everybody, here's the status quo. We got Big Fish with 24, excuse me, 19 out of 24. Uh, and then we have a, a two two person tie with 18, and we also have Neriditsky at 17, and then a big group of players at 16 and a half. So a lot of people competing for second through fourth. I'm pretty certain. Yep. Fed is able to well, Fed is able to win clinches or a draw. Right, he clinches. But if he loses, I wonder if he still gets the spot. That's really going to be a tough call here. And right now, Fedosev is white against Arabic Falcon. Let's flip the board around to get from Fedosev's big fish offered a draw. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Big Fish offered a draw and he said no because Arabic Falcon needs to win to get into the two to four placement, right? Oh, but did Penguin GM get two to four yesterday? Penguin GM got two to four yesterday. And yes. that means Arabic Falcon, well, still there are people tied with him, but if Arabic Falcon even gets fifth place on tie breaks, he qualifies for the round robin portion. So that's good to keep in mind. He might not even know that. Right now, with the black pieces, he's just trying to get aggressive, but Big Fish is super solid here. The Bishop on H1 looks silly, but it's doing well to protect the center. You can go F4 at the right moment. Mm -hmm. expand. Bishop on A1 to get on defensive square. Trade those bishops off. Maybe go Bishop C3 back and then trade off the bishop on a more useful square than having to put your rook on A1. Okay, King to H1 makes sense. You can even think about G4 at the right moment to go after the H3 pawn. Oh my god, this is getting aggressive on the king side now. Take on G6... I don't know, do you take on g6 with queen g5? What's queen c2? That's a terrible move, because now you lose your bishop. Uh-oh. I am listening. I'm, I'm just hopping around all the games. Uh, I think Genghis Khan checkmated, literally just force made on the board against Jeffrey, so he's going to win. Uh, Penguin under pressure from Zhigalko, it seems, but uh, yeah, it just looks like he's in a bad position up on the clock. Whoa, that uh, made on h7, you called it. Yep, that's, that's painful, and uh, Genghis Khan just won. And, oh, it flipped around again. The game between Big Fish still going. Big Fish in trouble, down a pawn, and Arabic Falcon with mating threats. Is that mate? Nope. Oh, queen e4. Knight c4, your d4 is hanging. And you just can't protect easily. Bishop, look at this. He's completely crushing him. Uh, but I like this comeback opportunity by Big Fish here. Take, take g6. Uh-oh. c5, no, knight d1. And c5. Oh, nice. c5 is even better than a3. I was going to try to go a3, knight to b2, but now here, knight c3. You play more quickly. Play more quickly. Don't let me down here. Knight C. Oh, C4 traps the bishop. Yikes. That's it. Oh, but this is not easy. Knight C2. King F2. I mean, it's not that easy because there's no time, but the bishop right. should be winning, of course. Knight C6 check is happening. Just go Knight C6 or Knight D4 back. Play very quickly here. The knight can't move from A2, which is really annoying. Oh, oh and they're. Uh oh. G4. G4. Push the G pawn. Go with it. Just go with it. And go King D3. I don't care if it's losing. Make the moves very quickly. Oh, you could have played knight a2. This isn't very smart because now, yep, king d5. And uh -oh. you're going to win a bunch of tempi. And now uh -oh. king c5. He's going the wrong way. Knight, king d Oh, knight c4 check. No, oh, take oh, he lost some time. He had it. He was doing the right thing to get a queen. He lost it. And how did... Loses... Does he lose the tie breaks? Penguin also lost. Penguin lost too? Big Fish still has the tie breaks, it looks like. Oh, my gosh. All for not there. An Arabic Falcon is in fifth place still, I think, and Arabic Falcon will go to the round robin. Oh, my gosh. Naraditsky. Who did Naraditsky beat? I didn't even see what was happening. Who did Naraditsky just beat? Naraditsky won against Nihal Sarin, but Nihal Sarin had that game won. Wow, Genghis Khan wins on the tie breaks, it seems. No way! It was a last-second flip there. That's unbelievable because you rely on your opponents. Every single opponent you play, you ultimately rely on. Penguin finishing in third, but second and third in both of these. Oh, okay, everybody. So just like yesterday, uh, we're going to take a quick break, catch our breath. So, so can all of you. Uh, and we'll be back here just in a second to uh, let you know who's moving on to the round robins, who's in what bracket, and maybe go over some games as well. So stay with us. We'll be right back. And we're back, everybody, and we've got, we've got, uh, we've got answers. You have questions. So, Robert, first of all, how how are you doing? How's your health? I'm I'm in pain. I'm legitimately in pain. 
And I mean, I can only imagine how some of the players feel like Fedoseev, that's Big Fish 1995, when he had the tournament in the bag. And then that last round game, he lost on time and Genghis Khan overtook him. So I'm all right, Levy. I'm very hyped. I mean, I'm still, I'm like coming down from all the hype. Levy, how are you doing, buddy? I'm not going to lie. Uh, after yesterday's broadcast, uh, I was, you know, it was a, it was a first time run at this and uh, it was stressful. And, and at the end, I mean, I was, I was so out of energy that, that I, I had to just lay down and, and rest for about half an hour, took a power nap today. I, I, I don't know. I want to, I want to go, I want to go do some parkour off of, off a rooftop or something. These games today were completely crazy. Uh, yeah. I loved the fact that uh, Ferruja ended up just not, I think he, I think he actually withdrew. He ended Did up he? not finishing the tournament. Yup. And so Genghis Khan qualifies that's uh, Federico Perez Ponza heat from Argentina qualifies himself for the seventh spot in the bracket. We could pull that up uh, if we have it ready. And if not, then everybody will see it up on the screen uh, by tie break, by virtue of tie break and having the stronger opposition. Fedoseev, Naraditsky and Arabic Falcon qualify for the second. That's the second round Robin, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Because Penguin GM had a top three finish on both days. And the you know these players will be competing for a uh, for 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 a final spot. So who uh, who do you have in 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 these kinds of round robins? Are we, you you think we're gonna go for Penguin or maybe a dark horse candidate like Naraditsky or or Falcon? It's tough to say, especially with that format, right? Because quadruple round robin, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So you play each player four total times, and to me that favors the high rated classical players like uh, Artemia, because there are some wild cards that are going to be invited. I'm not sure. I have no insight whether or not Artemia will be one of those wild cards slotted into the round robin portion, but I would favor someone like Artemia who showed that he can clearly play bullet with the best of them. And as you get more familiar with your opponents, I think it definitely helps the stronger player, but Penguin played amazingly both yesterday and in today's qualifier. He lost the last round both times, which is, not the best sign when it, it's coming down to the, the wire there and the clutch, but Penguin GM has shown time after time he is an amazing force and bullet. He beat Ferruja head to head. So, Levy, I'm going to, you know, he, he has to be one of your favorites of the however many players we're playing in the round robin. Yes. And then uh, we also have, we may not have a graphic for this just yet, but uh, we do know the round robin groups. In one, we have Andrew Tang, young Christoph Duda, that's Polish Fighter 3000, and Gerg Meyer, who is Gerg Meyer, uh, not surprisingly, very, very stoic and consistent. Uh, and in the second one, we have Big Fish, Fedoseev, who made a splash today, no pun intended, uh, Daniel <laughs> Naraditsky, and Salem Saleh. I got to say that second round robin is, is more power punched every single player, about 3,000, but you know, if, if I got to choose a winner in that first one, it's, it's got to be Tang, as you said. And if I got to choose a winner in that second one, I really don't know. I want to say Naraditsky, but who knows? The, the stakes are higher and all those players can beat each other. And again, that, that's an even different format. So I think we have 25 rounds of Swiss. Sometimes you have, uh, you know, you've got like a situation where you're playing a 10 game or 20 game or 100 or 2300 game match, for God's sake. Yep. Uh, but uh, I don't know how. How would you feel in a round robin against only two other players? I don't know if I, I'm not sure I'm that, I'm that comfortable there, but well, you know, we'll see. Something, something that's interesting, Levy, is the psychology, right? When you play a Swiss tournament and you lose to someone, you can mm -hmm. just forget about it. Like if I lose to you in a bullet game, I'm like, okay, Levy beat me, but I'm moving on to the next game. But if you're playing someone over and over again, and I'm like, oh, I lost to Levy in the second game. Oh, we're playing a second time. I need to beat Levy because he beat me earlier. So right. I think that psychological element can be very dangerous for some players in a very negative way. Because like when you start reflecting, I've already lost two games to that person. I need to show that I can beat them. No, no, you don't need to beat that one person. You need to beat the rest of the field. So I, I think you have to keep your composure, especially in bullet, when you have to rely on just being consistent, being quick, and making good moves that are also anticipating your opponent's threat. So um, it's very hard to keep your balance, you keep your focus when you're playing someone over and over again because it's easy to get tilted. We also know that uh, I think there's going to be wild card spots as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there will be for sure. Right. So uh, the wild card, you know, invites could go to, and and again, I, I'm only I'm only drawing hypotheticals. It could it could go to any of the talented young players or. Uh, we saw Alexander Borgik, right? He was steamrolling the field on both days, and he's frequently playing in, uh, you know, in, in in a lot of online blitz matches and and tournaments. And 
uh, he, he just wasn't able to kind of keep up that pace. I'm, I'm always curious to see what kind of streak people go on. A lot of people start really strong and then falter toward the end, or they kind of go in waves. They go plus five, minus two, plus five, minus two, all the way to the end. And that's why they kind of never, never hang around at the top, but kind of make late pushes. So yeah, uh, yeah, there's, there, there's a ton to analyze. Why don't we take a, take a quick look at some of our last round matchups? We had a uh, Daniel Naraditsky against Nihal Sarin. Uh, if we want to pull that game up. Uh, yep. I pulled up the wrong Daniel Nar- Naraditsky game. I pulled up the game where he lost to Arabic Falcon because they're playing again. So I lost the, uh, the game there because like you know about these players and the first thing you should know is that they can't get enough chess right <laughs> like Nerdisky's still going here but i have his game now up against nihal sarin against daniel Nerdisky. so where was a critical moment did you find one in this game where uh, things started it was, wasn't necessarily like a critical moment as much as it was i pulled the game up in around the middle game and things looked to be going really well for black uh, and you know, you could talk about perhaps like a, you know, like yeah. I mean, Black had a pawn mass, and if I miss, unless I miscounted, Black was also up a pawn, a little bit, a little bit beyond, beyond this point. But uh, it, it looked like everything was going very smoothly for Nihal Sarin. I mean, unless unless you can see something, yeah, like Knight F3, right? Knight F3, oh. and, then, and then so that's, that's a pin and a win. Yeah, that's just so Nihal Sarin had everything going for him, is what you're saying. Like yeah, I mean, basically, this could have been very different situation. This could have been Zhigalko qualifying because if Nero loses this game, he's he's out, and today was his day to qualify. Yeah, so. you're absolutely right. If he did not win this game, he would have been stuck with 17 points. And let's say, how did he actually win the game? Because oftentimes, I mean, he's losing all his pieces. So why didn't he take a C2 pawn on uh, move 26? Right? He went Queen H4 going for mate. Okay, well, actually, that makes sense. Why he didn't he take? But Queen takes C2 is a free pawn. He went Queen H4. He still didn't take on C2, and he didn't trade queens. So he could trade queens and then take on C2. That pawn's been hanging forever. I feel like a broken record, but he went queen G4. And then finally, C3, knight here, and queen D1. Look at Naroditsky, that cheeky GM that he is. He said, I'm inviting you to fork my rook and my queen because I have queen D1 attacking your queen and your knight at the same time. And so if we trade queens on D1, then my rook is no longer under attack. So... Naradisky got out of it. I'm sure Naradisky was playing at lightning speed. <coughs> Excuse me. And now the light squares for Black are feeling a little bit more vulnerable. He went G5, got into an endgame, and he's a pawn up in an endgame. Man, Levy, what happened here? Help me figure this out. I don't know. I, I, I will say this, though. I talked about styles earlier, and Daniel Naradisky very much has that defensive prowess in a lot of these games. I've, yeah. been, I, I've been pushing him back in many i mean i've played in many games especially in hyperbole not a lot in one oh but and you get a good position and you're even comfortable on time and then all of a sudden literally every move he is a step faster defensively and he's also a step faster and a second faster on the clock yeah. and suddenly you find yourself in a position where you don't even have an advantage anymore and you're, you're in a huge time hole and then you lose and yeah. you can you, you know you can remedy these things we talked about a lot today can remedy these things over the course of a match, but you cannot remedy these things in a head-to-head match once. And so he was able to pull it out. I mean, that's just clutch. There's no yeah, way to put it. I'm totally with you. And what you mentioned about the defensive resourcefulness, if you're going to move 45 in this game, knight a5 was a big blunder. Instead, knight d8, you know, being passive sometimes is the way to go. And these are the moves that Naraditsky finds instantly. But Neil Sarin saying, I'm going to multitask i'm going to protect my pawn c6 and attack your pawn on b3 a sort of bug house like move right because in bug house you want to attack and defend simultaneously here they just ran right to b4 removing the guard of the pawn c6 and once you lose that pawn now i have an outside pass pawn for white in fact he won the pawn in d5 he then won the pawn in a6 and everything went to uh well went downhill let's put it that yeah. way for, <laughs> for, went somewhere went somewhere and uh, of course, you know, you know, the precision is not is not what you have to analyze in these positions because in time scrambles, all sorts of things happen. We see a lot of pawn versus knight races, actually. Yep. Obviously, we, we can't pull them all up today, but uh, that's that's one thing you notice very often is that this king shouldering technique. We saw Big Fish, I think, flag earlier, in fact, in a game against, was it Genghis Khan or something like that? I, I mean, I, I could be literally just throwing, you know, uh, names out, uh, out into the open that, that don't mean anything, but he had a, he had a king pawn versus knight race might have been against it wasn't against uh Saleh in the last round uh we could also just quickly analyze that that very last game uh yeah, for sure 
Uh, by the way, you know, by the way, Genghis won like a million games in a row. I'm trying to count right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He won eight games in a row before losing that last game. So he was, you know, he was on a winning streak. And then, as you mentioned, this last game here against Salem Saleh didn't go very well. Yeah, so, let's uh, take a look at take a look at how how Saleh played the role of spoiler. Yeah, and he qualified – not only did he play the role of spoiler, he qualified himself for the round robin. So that was an extremely clutch moment for him. And, well, he went H5, H4, which is thematic in some ways when your opponent has a Fian Keto Bishop on the king side. But it's also kind of risky because that's one of your own pawns that were around your king side, and you leave behind a lot of squares. So he even put his pawn to H3, as we'll see. And that pawn H3 in endgame is a goner, right? I'll go F3, I'll go G4, and then I can go after this pawn H3. But with material on the board, it's a very useful pawn trying to get back rank checkmate threats and making the light squares feel more vulnerable. Yeah, this is... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I mean, I, I I love this approach from Saleh. I, we, I've mentioned it literally the, the past two hours, is that he, he looks for ways to... I'm not sure what Big Fish's style is, quite frankly. Uh, I think he's versatile. I don't know much about him. I don't see him, you know, playing the Arena Kings in particular. Or, okay, I've seen him in some title Tuesdays, but not enough to make any sort of assumptions. But uh, Arabic Falcon always will try to instigate. And he he must have known that he was in a must-win situation. But even if he wasn't, he would have still played the same way. Yeah. And You're right. He's not one of those players who's just, like, content with a solid position. He's happy to get the action going. And around here, actually, a move – uh, 24 F5 was played by white is all of a sudden big fish was like, whoa, I have an opportunity to attack because black doesn't have pieces on the king side, right? And A4, if it was up to me, I probably would have left my queen side alone and gone straight over to the king side and was like queen to G5 trying to take this pawn on G6. I bet queen G5 looks extremely strong putting pressure on this G6 pawn, right? Like <laughs> just, who cares I, I can't, king side? Yeah, no, I mean, I just can't get over this, uh, this H and A attack. <laughs> From, yeah he brought this one and they brought that one right you got to play on both sides of the board but you got to do it concretely i mean you you hear very often at, at, at club level amateur level it's focus on a plan having a plan is is better than having no plan even if it's a bad one but in this game arabic falcon basically laid his arms on both sides of the chessboard picked up the pieces and just threw them at his opponent yep. and uh well it worked out i mean it doesn't always work out like this but uh it worked. It worked out in this game. How, how did uh, how did he get a big advantage and, and win in the uh, tactical skirmish? Yeah, because B four was just a little bit slow, and I you know I was clamoring for Queen G five on B four knight D seven, and now Queen C two, which is ultra defensive. And the problem is, once this knight reaches E five, it protects G six, it attacks F three, and attacks C four all at the same time. So that square is beautiful for the piece. And so we saw the game continue. And well, the big problem for White is you're losing your light square bishop. And once you lose your light square bishop, all the surrounding light squares are in trouble. So we saw him, he didn't even take the bishop, honestly. He gave white these isolated pawns on a2, c5, and e4. And, well, he won the c5 pawn. He gave a check, won the e4 pawn, and everything was just collapsing. And, yeah, it took some effort. There were plenty of mistakes, of course, but uh, a nice win for Arabic Falcon in the end there. Very clutch win. I'm always curious, like in these really high level games what the balance of good versus you know drastically bad moves is i mean of course you don't have to play the top engine line all the time but uh you you don't want to give away the advantage too drastically to your opponent as well and these guys seem to have a really good grasp on it uh before we go why don't we uh again just take a quick final look at the uh bracket and then what uh what what prize money people will be taking home today uh as we saw uh Ali Reza Faruja qualifying himself for a spot at playing Hikaru as the eighth spot. Uh, he might have been hoping to win the qualifier today and then ultimately decide, but uh, the seventh seed will be Federico Perez Ponza, and then the round robin qualifier uh, will secure the sixth spot uh, in, in the bracket for a matchup against Alexander Grishuk. Uh, Robert, before we check out the prizes, who would you like to play if you made the bracket in the first round or in any round? Um, <laughs> who's your dark, who's your weakest link there? Um, <laughs> um, you're making me pick one, so <laughs> I will pick. I think I would like to play MVL, not because he's weak, but because I think his style is very interesting and is a lot of fun to play against. So even if I'm inevitably going to lose to any of these top players, it would be a really fun matchup. But I actually, I don't think MVL did that great today. I don't even see him in the top twenty. Like, how did he finish this tournament? Yeah, 
where was he? What, how many points did he get? I don't even know. But he struggled down the stretch, it looks like, in this field. And so keeping that in mind, I would definitely not want to play Ali Reza. I would definitely not want to play Hikaru. And the rest is just sort of, you know, point, put a blindfold on me, have me point somewhere, and I'm going to lose no matter what, but it'll be a fun matchup. But I think that MVL, based on his games today, maybe Grishuk, honestly, because Grishuk uh, <laughs> has been playing in these, these events, and he's shown that his mouse speed isn't always the quickest. And right. with that, I think that's very essential when you're playing bullet game after bullet game is even more so than the play on the board is the mouse speed. So what about you, right. Levy? Who would you pick? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it would be NVL or, or, or Grishuk. Uh, if I wanted a you know, quick, quick, uh, quick go around, I'd go up against Hikaru. Uh, he'd make quick work of me and maybe I'd go, go for lunch. But uh, yeah, I, I, I would be really curious to see Koryakin and Aroni, and I've never seen them play bullet ever unless it's the speech chess championship. So that would be interesting for me. Uh, let's end on a good note, not us getting crushed by Super GMs. What <laughs> prize money folks will be taking home today? We've got, uh, it's quite nice. Uh, it, it, is, it is really nice. Danny said yesterday for, uh, in terms of, of some bullet chess, 750 for a top spot and uh, you know, position in the championship bracket, second and third, make decent cash as well. Uh, and then, hey, you, you make the top 10, you get 25 bucks. That, uh, that, can, that can buy you some of that lunch. And uh, it's 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 really it's it's really nice. <laughs> yeah, how so, can you complain for playing bullet chess at your computer and making a bunch of money? And just you know, it's 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 energizing. Yeah, I, I definitely feel when I'm playing these bullet, I feel like motivated to keep playing chess. And all these people are professionals; they love the game, so uh, they made a good deal of money. They had fun, and what more can you ask for? Well, Robert, I I had fun. I'm still super energized. Uh, tomorrow, everybody. Uh, we've got we've got kind of a double header. That's why we're we're pushing the start time a bit earlier. Uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time is going to be your round robin qualifier. Please tune in. It's going to be uh, I believe you you and Danny have the call. We do a little bit of musical commentary, and, uh, and then we have Arena Kings in the afternoon. So it's just going to be a, a packed day of chess. And I really I wonder who might even play both. Maybe Naroditsky, but yeah. no pressure on him. Tang, so. Tang and Naroditsky. It's my guess. Yeah. So stick around, everybody. Uh, not for not for this show. We are. Uh, we're done, but we're going to send you all over and keep the energy for uh, Anna Rudolph. If anyone doesn't know who that is, she is basically the, the world's, I mean, at this point, premier commentator uh, on events, world, cha world championship. You, you, and, you and Anna are always, are always a delight. You, you, Anna, Danny have been, and Botas, of course, uh, for Pro Chess League have been amazing. So we're, uh, we're sending you all over there now, and it's been fun. This has been great. Tomorrow, round robin. And we'll, uh, well, I won't see you there, but Robert and Danny will. Take care, everyone. Yep. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in.